morning everybody today is the second day of our presentation somebody can just check the audio also in the youtube stream if it is going properly or not okay, so this is the second day of uh, our presentation semester two students are uh, making their presentations and today uh, they are going to make presentations on 20th century literature uh, which will be post second world war literature but before we uh, list down the students who are going to make presentation today and their topics just an overview of the entire process that uh, students are submitting their presentations uh, in google classroom let me share the screen So in the Google Classroom, uh, all the students, uh, first of all, submit their presentations. And through this submission, they uh, are evaluated by teachers. And they also make presentations through uh, this Google Classroom. Uh, and we have a rubric through which uh, the students are being evaluated. The rubric has seven criteria: minimum one point and maximum four points in the in the criteria through which teacher is doing the analysis uh, evaluation of the uh, presenters but that is uh, one mode of looking at the presenters we have a parallel uh, evaluation by peer and self also peer and self so uh, all the students are supposed to evaluate everybody in the group and also do self-evaluation also and for that also we have prepared a online rubric to help them to do the evaluation so parameters are given here and then randomly they can decide from one to four points uh, when they do the evaluation uh, you will see in this evaluation this or in teachers evaluation also that uh, even if uh, as a teacher I want to give uh, you minimum score then also minimum is 25 points out of 100 and if you slightly do good then you easily get 50 percentage so yesterday's evaluation if we see then uh, the lowest one also is having more than 50 to 53 marks out of 100 so the lowest also is more than 50 percentage so when you do evaluation you also can say that at least you can start with uh, when you come here and you have prepared the slide it means you deserve to get at least two points at least two points uh, some of you have given one point to the presenter in peer and self evaluation <laughs> only one point so that is a very harsh assessment very very harsh assessment that you are doing that only giving only one point to the presenter so if they have prepared slides if they come here and they make their presentation, they deserve at least two points. Then if they have completed successfully then uh, and given answers, then three, four and quite satisfactory, then five also you can give. So if we are ready to give 100 out of 100, why are you not able to give five out of five? <laughs> when you see that there is a good performance, you don't say that give everybody five out of five. But at least when there is a relatively good presentation, then why are you so harsh on each other? <laughs> if teacher is no problem, then why you have? And why we tell you this? Because you are all going to become tomorrow's teachers. And you will spoil the careers of many other students. <laughs> if you will remain so harsh <laughs> in your presentations, then you are going to destroy the careers of so many young uh, uh, aspiring people also. So that realization should be there that when you are in the process of assessment evaluation there are so many lives there human people they are not files dead files but there are living human beings that you are dealing with and uh, this is what we see time and again that in because of some poor results in 10 12 standard so many people commit suicide also and sometimes in reassessment they pass also so it means the one who has done a poor evaluation first time uh, is the murderer <laughs> of that so how to overcome this and you can't work with once the people become teachers because they start believing that we are something now now you can't change them but when they are in the process of becoming you can tell them that well you see this so this process is to understand all this thing also why peer and self evaluation 
gains important and for that all you uh, understand so uh, you see this evaluation when you do it is not that you have to give full points to everybody but uh, the, uh, the people don't deserve only one point also okay? so that way from two to five uh, you can uh, evaluate you can pick uh, keep a parameter that in today's presentation the one who will give the best comparatively today comparatively you know percentile system nowadays is introduced by government also percentile means in that batch how you have performed maybe in the previous batch there were smarter people than you maybe in the coming batches there will be much smarter people than you also but your competition is not with who had the previous and the later on in percentage the competition is with the previous batches and the subsequent batches that what you get but percentile means in your batch in your 100 people who has appeared if you are the best then you get 100 percentile if you get 90 means you are in the top 10 percentage of the performers in that batch not comparatively previous batches also that systems are in the evaluation so today out of this 10 uh, uh, or 14 students uh, who is doing the best you can give five points and then uh, uh, four then three uh, then two uh, that way you can uh, uh, do the evaluation also that is learning how to evaluate within the small group not keeping in mind the other people who are not present here and not those those people there so that is uh, the purpose of seeing that how the evaluation and assessment we are able to do so for that peer and self also you don't have to be very harsh on yourself also but neither you have to be uh, a, a very much like praiseworthy for yourself also but relatively good uh, assessment of yourself how you can do that you have to see that in a given group where do i stand if you think that you are was the best then you can give five but if you think that no somebody has done better than four three you can give uh, to yourself uh, uh, also so no need to give only one point to yourself also you also uh, might have done better so uh, that way you can keep in mind uh, when you do the evaluation so uh, uh, go through, as I told you, you have to go through what evaluation you have done and you have that email also, it is all transparent system. So people can see that uh, also and at the end when you submit you get the charts also. At the end you get uh, the chart. So once you submit, uh, uh, you all will get uh, this also that uh, uh, in this paper uh, 28, so 14 people have done the assessment and uh, you uh, will be able to see uh, that how you are being uh, evaluated also on, on different uh, parameters so that you can uh, uh, see uh, uh, the performance wise and can see <laughs> so uh, 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 if it is by mistake then you can add it also uh, if uh, the things are by mistake then you can still because editing option we have put there and not to resubmit but editing option we have also put so you can see that okay so that is uh, uh, something that uh, i have noticed so i thought that i should tell you that how you have to evaluate and you have to read the things uh, uh, also so that is how uh, the things are done now uh, let us have a list of today's presenters we will have uh, vishwa uh, today making presentation on uh, gender dynamics and power relation in 1984. Nanda's presentation on existentialism in waiting for Godot. Uh, Maya on waiting for Godot and men's search for community. Kusum will make it on Newspeak, the tongue in novel 1984. Kavita uh, will be reading on art as a double edged uh, sword, the complex relationship between creativity and political ideology in an artist of the floating world. Jayasri's presentation on the power of manipulation, exploring control and deception in George Orwell's 1984. Jay will make it on George Orwell's 1984, a Marxist study. Hiral on deceptive narrators, unraveling truth in Trishyam and an artist of the floating world. Uh, this uh, uh, thanks to generative AI that we are getting very good titles, very attractive titles. We hope that the presentation also will be equally attractive as the titles are uh, looking here. Uh, uh, Tatri will make it on man or manufactured, redefining humanity through biopunk narratives. Darshan on waiting in absurdity, exploring existential themes in waiting for Godot. 
Bhumi uh, presentation on Beyond Humanity, a comparative analysis of dehumanization in dystopian narratives. Akshay is on narrative techniques in 1984 by George Orwell. And the last one in the morning session will be by Akash on exploring the floating world, understanding uh, uh, Edo period uh, uh, of Japan. Okay. okay, so let us start with the first one. I guess Vishwa, you can start with the, with the presentation. Uh, gender dynamics and power relations in 1984. Tables of contents. Introduction about a novel. 1984 novel by English authors George, uh, George Orwell, published in 1949 as a warning against. Uh, totalitarianisms, uh, the chilling di dystopia made a deep impressions on readers and his ideas entered ma mainstream culture in a way achieved by very few, uh, few books. The book's title and uh, many of its uh, co concepts uh, such as Big Brother and the Thaw, uh, uh, police and instant instantly recognized and understood often as a by, uh, by words for modern social and political abuses. Orwell wrote 1984 as a warning after years uh, of uh, broadings uh, on the twins means uh, of nihilism uh, and Stalinism. Uh, it's a dep depictions of a state where daring of think uh, differently is uh, rewarded with a tutor uh, where people are monitored every second of the day and where party propaganda, Trump free speech and throat is uh, uh, so boring, uh, so bearing the remainders uh, of the evils and un uncounted uh, countable governments. Uh, Winston is the symbol of uh, the values and civilized life, and his uh, defect, uh, def uh, deft is a poignant uh, reminder to the value, uh, value abilities of such values in the midst of all powerful state. Uh, gender roles. In 1984, Orwell constructs a narrative that portrays women as a passive and sexual object of male desires. Uh, Orwell does this uh, through a uh, various literary technique that render the women of the novel lesser than men. Uh, Orwell's portraits uh, of uh, Catherine and Julia contribute to the uh, abode uh, discussions of uh, how is a Canonial, uh, canonical uh, text that does not relate to women specif uh, specifically. Uh, depicts a uh, woman as objects uh, even though julia and uh, catherine, uh, catherine uh, are counterparts uh, for each other or well objectify uh, this uh, woman uh, whether intentions intentional uh, or not uh, the impact of such portrayal on the readers is significant especially considering that uh, this work is widely told to high school students who are developing uh, their uh, conceptions about gender roles when examining uh, how this little, uh, literary technique contribute to way in which women are uh, oppressed and objectified uh, is poses a uh, risk of oversimplify oversimplify uh, issues po uh, potentially leading to the an oversight of how the woman in the novel may raise this of us subvert this role this novel does not uh, pertain to femini uh, feminism directly the feminist uh, perspective is uh, often uh, overlooked in uh, conversations re regarding the novel as they tend uh, to focus on the danger uh, to an authentic authority uh, terrian, uh, regimes uh, resulting in students who are exposed to uh, micro genetics ideas without uh, uh, 
uh, critical examinations by acknowledging and uh, accounting for the complexity uh, of uh, this uh, factor, a more nonsense and, uh, understanding of the impact of the Orwell uh, portrait of women on the way in which women are op uh, oppressed and objectified. Uh, furthermore, this uh, approach can uh, furnish a framework for dis uh, discussing uh, how literature reflect and shapes social attitudes and uh, belief about topics such as uh, power, gender, and identity. Uh, power relations. The visual interpretations of 1984 is that uh, it shows uh, us a bold but domed research dissertations uh, of human values in the face of uh, an uh, inhuman uh, tyranny uh, among these values sexual love privacy and memory of the personal and collective past all are associated with the love affair between uh, winston and julia now we might describe this uh, winston uh, consciousness as the temporary vehicle uh, of the necessary self ne negations of the party mind uh, the readers co consciousness in the novel play a similar role in entire uh, entertains the delusions of uh, humanity as a free uh, agency of uh, order to overcome to novelist problem of uh, demonstrating a uh, totality totalitarian society thus western illusions to is a reader illusion uh, and perhaps uh, even part partly the authors the illusion that the party uh, dominations is less than the total combines uh, with the fear that it is a total uh, orwell is against totalitarianism his work has been a uh, symbols of this uh, options for the entire post generations uh, and uh, to suggest any ambiguity in this uh, st stance sound like uh, perversions of his meaning uh, yet orwell was clearly intrigued and attracted by the notions of totality uh, despite it, uh, through uh, oppos oppositions which turns out to be part of uh, the system the Julia and Winston of Fate 1984 is a fictional story about two characters who engaged in a secret romantic relationship uh, despite leaving a totalitarian society where love and intimacy are uh, strictly uh, regulated uh, and published. The relationship uh, seen as symbols of uh, rebellions against the uh, oppressive uh, re uh, regime and the limitations uh, it plans of person freedoms can can be treated to the party and uh, diminishing loyalty to uh, Big Brother. Uh, control of sex, uh, sexuality. The party desires of uh, accept total control not only on people elections but also on their thoughts, desire, love and sexuality is a scene in the uh, quote, the party was trying to kill the sex in, uh, instinct or if could not be killed then destroyed it uh, and dirty it. Uh, throughout the novel, Orwell represents uh, sexuality in this uh, dystopian society as something that has uh, to be su suppressed and until uh, ultimately wo woped into the false love uh, for Big Brother. The most dangerous of all men, uh, means to control show in George Orwell's novel, 1984 is perhaps the portrayal of loves and relationships as a dangerous and un ultimately impossible under the totalitarian regimes of the party and the government seeks not only to control every aspects of these uh, citizens uh, live but also their uh, most personal and intimate lives their emotions and sexual relationship love has been uh, abolished uh, and replaced by the term sex crime sex without emotions attachment or love love is seen as a to treat the, to the power of the party because create a sense of loyalty and connections between individuals that could challenge his, uh, its authority. The protagonist Winston Smith, Winston Smith falls in love with her fellow party members named Julia uh, and they begin a secret relationship. However, their love is ultimately discovered by the party and they are subjected to the brutal tutor and the brainwashing to erase uh, their feelings to uh, feelings for each other and replace them with feeling of loyalty to the party. In uh, Orwell's 1984, love relationships are heavily 
scrutinized and controlled by the totalitarian uh, regime, the government represented by the character of Big Brother, seeking to uh, eliminate any form uh, of intimacy or attachment that could challenge the authority or loyalty to the state. Winston Smith, the main protagonist, in, in initially rebelled against their uh, these notions by secretly uh, secretly starting a love affair with a fellow party uh, members named Julian, but their relationship is a, a thing uh, as a th uh, treat of, uh, as party control is love and desire as a view as a distractions from the devotion uh, uh, dev devotions to Big Brother. The government existentially monitors the and publication any expressions of intimacy and Western and Julian uh, relationship eventually leads to their capture and tutor. Uh, this uh, famous George Orwell quote. Uh, Intersections, gender and power. In George Orwell, dystopian novel 1984, gender, uh, gender and power are intricate intractable uh, linked with the totalitarian party in of occasion uh, enforce uh, rigid gender ro roles that reforces uh, their control over the populace populace uh, women are expected to be sub servant to men primarily value to their ability and be a children uh, and natures their party future generation they uh, uh, they were not uh, not confident uh, to domestic sp uh, spheres uh, with a little opportunity and intellectuals uh, or personal growth. The parties prohibits uh, passionate love, prominent uh, promoting uh, procreations as the duty of the uh, duty of the party. They even control sexual activity through sur uh, surveillance uh, and the ever present threat of uh, punishment. These are. Uh, this is explained by Winston's re rebellion, which partly stemmed from the, his desire for loving relationship with Julia, uh, defying the party control over their sexuality. Uh, the novel doesn't exist in uh, civilly uh, explore gender dynamics, but it does highlight the way in which power structures uh, can uh, reinforce traditional gender roles and uh, perpetuated antiquity. Inquality, inequality. Uh, how, uh, however, it uh, it's important to note that uh, both men and women suffer under the totalitarian rules as a party grip on power extent uh, of all aspect of life, reg regardless uh, of gender. The novel doesn't extensively explore gender dynamics, but it uh, does highlight uh, the ways in which power structure can reinforce uh, traditional gender roles and perpetuate inequality. Uh, conclusion, the gender dynamics uh, and power relationship in uh, uh, George Orwell, uh, 1984, undersource the per persuasive influence of the party's totalitarian uh, re regimes on uh, all, aspect, uh, all aspects of society, including gender roles and relationship, while men uh, predominantly hold positions of authority within the party and society, both men and women are subjected uh, to the oppressive uh, control uh, of uh, the regime. Uh, gender serves as another tool through uh, which the party experiences its power, reinforces traditional roles and perpetuating inequality. inequality. Ultimately, the novel uh, depicts uh, or di dystopian words where in individual regardless of gender and are uh, spirit, uh, stripped of their autonomy and subjected to the whims of, of a uh, ruthless regime. This is my reference. Thank you. Anyone have question? Yes. Vishwa, my question is, how does gender influence power dynamics in 1980? Uh, gender influence uh, uh, influence power dynamics uh, into uh, into uh, through the party control, social rules and norms, uh, 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 so social rules and norms uh, between the uh,
between the uh, enforcement next Vishwa, how do you, how do the gender dynamics portrayed in the 1984 reflects a real world example of power structure and oppression? Uh, the gender dynamic portrayed in the 1984 reflect real world example of uh, uh, may, uh, manipulate uh, manipulate by those power uh, maintain control. Uh, and perpetuated, uh, perpetuated uh, with society. Thank Hello everyone, uh, today is, uh, my topic name is uh, Extensionalism in uh, Waiting for Border. This is my personal information. This is table of content. And uh, starting with uh, what is Extensionalism. Extensionalism is the philosophical theory that uh, people are free to agent uh, who have a control over their choice, uh, choices and actions. It associated with the 20th century. It is a view um, view that uh, humans uh, define their own meaning in life and try to make uh, rational decisions uh, despite existing an irrational universe. Existentialism is uh, as a movement is uh, used to describe those uh, who refuse to belong uh, to any school of thought and beliefs or uh, system. Existentialists uh, believe that society should not rest uh, restrict an individual's uh, life or actions and there is a uh, Restrictions inhibit uh, free will and development of a uh, person's potential. Uh, history of existentialism. Ex uh, existentialist uh, type themes uh, appear in uh, early Buddhist and Christian writings. In the, 20, uh, in the 17th century, Blaise Pascal suggested that without a God, life uh, would be meaningless, boring and miserable. Uh, much as the uh, later existentialist uh, believed, uh, although unlike them, uh, Pascal shows the uh, as the reason uh, for existence of a god. Uh, existentialism uh, focuses on the analysis of human existence and uh, significance of uh, human choice, tracing its uh, origins uh, to Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. Uh, Karl Jasper uh, epitomized uh, its uh, view on uh, human existence while Jean Paul Sartre and uh, emphasized human decision making. Uh, first, uh, Soren Kierkegaard, uh, um, who is uh, uh, born in uh, Denmark in 1830, and uh, he is also considered a father of uh, existentialism and the founder of existentialism, laying the grand, uh, groundwork for a movement uh, with his focus is subjective experience uh, in the individual choice. This is the major box is uh, uh, in ex uh, existentialism. Uh, Existentialism uh, uh, in uh, Waiting for God it is a play by Samuel Bucket. It is a very interesting play by him. Uh, this is a play with the simple words with, uh, with the deep meaning. It was uh, published in 1952. Waiting for God is uh, one of the great examples of uh, absurd play. Uh, the importance of the play as uh, existential uh, drama lies in the multiplicity meaning, uh, meanings which, is, uh, which critics uh, have uh, discovered in it. Uh, these are the characters, the uh, mostly uh, six characters, but uh, Godo, which is the uh, invisible character, and uh, the boy was messenger. And these are four characters: Vladimir, Pozo, Estragon, and Lucky. 
in the uh, waiting for god or uh, both characters are waiting for god or uh, now question is who is god uh, and we have uh, eagerness uh, to know god uh, is a female or male uh, when, uh, she uh, leave a uh, band many other questions are raising with the uh, reading of play it is a topic for uh, thinking upon uh, existentialism some they say that uh, there is something misleading about uh, this uh, printed text uh, in the play uh, they both waiting for some inevitable uh, but what is it uh, sometime our thinking tell, uh, tell us that uh, it is uh, just illusive uh, and illustrations nothing more than that Vladimir and Estragon, who are the those substance uh, so commonly dressed uh, in uh, accident occupations role relationship they are uncommon uh, men so time is stopped uh, for uh, Vladimir and uh, for Estragon Vladimir communicate uh, and they ask uh, questions each other uh, Estragon said that uh, we have always uh, finding something to give impression we exist uh, that is the one dialogue that uh, never neglect the little things of life Kierkegaard was the philosopher and um, he gave a contributions in ex uh, existentialism. So he reflect the exist means that a process uh, of becoming. So uh, we can say that uh, waiting is a process for them, a process becoming through which uh, they seem uh, to realize they uh, exist. The long waiting for Godot and whose uh, neighbor appeared throughout the play but uh, there is the entry of boy and uh, who is a messenger of God uh, uh, he said that he will come tomorrow sir uh, waiting for God is ended a play that uh, demonstrate theme uh, of ex existentialism two main character of the play uh, Vladimir and uh, Estragon are put in an absurd situation just like human have been Put in the world uh, without any purpose uh, in the whole play do not, nothing change uh, their miserable condition existentialism emphasizes uh, on the practice of uh, doing something uh, creating purpose while accepting uh, existence in this world hence they have a uh, feel uh, free will uh, free will to make uh, their life better they can come out of situations and give their lives meaning in, but the do not do nothing. Estragon's dialogue uh, is notable in this uh, regard. He says nothing happens. No, nobody comes, nobody goes, uh, and it's awful. He knows uh, that his situation is awful. Ozo and Lucky both are important, uh, but uh, uh, when uh, but uh, uh, in Act Number Two, Ozo says that uh, when when. One day is that uh, not enough for you? And one day he won't uh, dumb. Uh, one day I went blind. Uh, one day I uh, we will go deep. One day we were born. Uh, and one day we shall die. The same day, the same second. Uh, it is that not enough for you. Uh, the giver they give birth uh, straight uh, of grave. The light uh, gleams uh, an instant. Uh, then it's a uh, night and once more. Now the conclusion, waiting for God or captures this essence, essential waiting through Vladimir, uh, Vladimir reflections. Let us uh, do something while uh, we have the chance. Uh, this got uh, encapsulate uh, characters, existential dilemmas and the uh, urgency of uh, finding purpose amidst uncertainty. This is my box writer. Thank you. Have you any question? Ask me. My question is How does Kierkegaard's philosophy continue to our understanding of the place existential themes? Mm -hmm. Kierkegaard's uh, philosophy uh, to um, uh, existentialism uh, uh, resonate with the uh, characters. So, uh, characters uh, ongoing reaching the uh, waiting or questioning and the main uh, in the main concept of the uh, discover ourself uh, journey of discover ourself Nanda. How do you interpret the idea of taking a leap of faith in context of uh, waiting for God? And first of all, leap of faith means that uh, believing in uh, uh, which is uh, not uh, have evident, but uh, we believing in that. And uh, and 
and we were no sure about it uh, what is the reason behind that but uh, we uh, hope and uh, exist or not but not believing but uh, we try to uh, become a success thank you Hello everyone. Today, myself, my work here. Today is my presentation on waiting for growth and men's search for community. This is my personal information about author. Full name Samuel Barclay Bucket. Samuel Bucket was an Irish novelist, dramatist, short story writer, theater director poet and literary translator. Samuel Puckett born in Dublin, Ireland in 1906. He was died in 1989. Samuel Puckett was winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1969. Famous work, works of uh, Samuel Puckett the famous and greatest work uh, waiting for Godot. Second, end game. Third, happy days for uh, Murphy, for what? And uh, six, uh, Molly. Theater of the absurd definition. Mary's and Webster dictionary defines the term says theater that seeks to represent the absurdity of human existence in a meaningless universe by business or fantastic meaning means waiting for Godot and men's search for community. Samuel Bucket's Waiting for Godot is a play about two terms with the rather exotic names of Vladimir and Axel. They stand beside the road near a tree, tree which is dead in Act 1 and wait for Godot. They are not certain whether they are at the right place or that this is the right day. Nor are they sure whether Guru is coming or what they ask him for or whether they have his name right. But they wait. They agree that nothing is left to be done. All of the possibilities have been exhausted. The rope has made a terrible the rope has made a terrible shot on Lucky's neck. 
while lucky himself has been reduced to a robot the master's cruelty and lack of feeling are almost incredible but also insist that he himself has been made in the image of god and they go back to their unhappy with the extra bond suggest and as he has before that they live but ladimi reminds him that they are waiting for good finally a boy arrives with a message from godot to the effect that he is not coming today but will certainly come tomorrow when extragon now suggests that they leave ladimir agrees but they do not go the certain first first on the first act as act to open the next day a few leaves have appeared on the tree beside the road but the two hobos wait in much the same mode mood as yesterday finally another boy appear with a message from godot he will not come this evening but will be there tomorrow the two tramps again agree to leave but they do not go and the play ends conclusion the end of waiting for godot makes people think about waiting not knowing and trying to find meaning in a world that does not seem to care as ladimir and extragon keep waiting for godot who they are not ever sure about this is my references if you question Maya, my question is: What is Godot, and what motivate uh, Vladimir and Elsa Bums to wait for him in Samuel Beckett's uh, play, Waiting for Godot? Godot is the um, mysterious uh, figure who who, who represents uh, interpreta interpretation, include religious and uh, symbolic meaning. And uh, Vladimir, Vladimir and Elsa Bums. to wait for uh, uh, godot um next when well, my question is uh, does the waiting for godot have a clear resolution no waiting for godot have does not have clear relation uh, about it's a uh, hexagon and a uh, nati mean and uh, and of uh, and last uh, and uh, hope and uh, long and ultimately a cycle of waiting for and of uncertainty thank you Good, day, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Kusum Sarveya, and uh, on the second day of presentation, I am going to uh, deliver a presentation on uh, Newspeak, the term in the novel of uh, George Orwell, 1984. This is my personal information tables, which we are going to discuss in the presentation. And let's start with the introduction. Uh, so the novel in 1984 uh, it is written by George Orwell which is portrays a dystopian society ruled by a totally totalitarian regime led by a uh, big brother the novel follows Winston Smith who is our protagonist uh, who rebels against the party's oppression set in the fictional superstate of Oceania like Wessex uh, the fictional uh, superstate 
uh, overall explored themes of surveillance uh, censorship and the loss of individual freedom uh, through its chilling depiction of the, wo of the world where uh, reality is controlled and manipulated. Uh, and this novel uh, served as a timeless uh, cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked government power. Uh, Newspeak is the official language of Oceania. Uh, it's designed to limit the freedom of thought and expression, aiming to control the minds of citizens. So this uh, uh, control to expression and aiming of control minds of citizens, it is, we can say, this that uh, um, main, uh, th main uh, reason of uh, main uh, aim of newspaper. It uh, embodies the manipulation and oppression uh, persist throughout the novel in the novel's uh, society. So I have put this question uh, on my presentation, uh, maybe the uh, uh, should be aim of this presentation is what, to find what is Newspeak and uh, is it really reflect the theme like totalitarian control, manipulated language and loss of individual freedom. And uh, along with uh, examine the parallel between uh, Newspeak and the present uh, contemporary uh, media. Uh, overview of novel. So this novel is, as I say, written by uh, George Orwell, and uh, this uh, protagonist of this uh, Winston, Winston Smith is a delusioned party member who rebels against the oppressive regime led by enigmatic Big Brother. See, this word of Big Brother isn't it similar with uh, the reality show uh, Big Boss? So uh, when I, uh, yeah, it must be the question of in my in our mind when we are going through the text. So uh, when I was uh, searching for this uh, topic and my material, so I got the, uh, the thing that this uh, reality show, uh, Big Brother, is actually uh, inspired by this novel. This uh, this novel uh, actually, because it is uh, in in last time uh, this uh, uh, authoritarianism, uh, totalitarianism, and to surveillance, censorship, and this kind of themes uh, we can easily identify in the in this uh, Big Boss show as. Well. Uh, Winston Smith navigates the torturous landscape of Oceania, uh, Oceania and he grappled with the loss of personal freedom and the struggle to maintain his own identity. And the same thing we can identify in the uh, show with the big boss as well. This last thing, erosion of fundamental human rights is also, uh, also it, will be, it will be in a uh, central in Norway. So a uh, definition and origin of the word in Newspeak. Uh, the Newspeak is propagandist language uh, basically and it is marked by euphemism and circumlocution and the inversion of customary mean. This euphemism and circumlocution may be, uh, it is the synonym of Newspeak because, uh, because they both are uh, similar actually. Newspeak, a language designed to diminish the range of thought in the novel 1984 by George Orwell. Uh, this Newspeak is language created by uh, government of Oceania and it is mainly a simplified version of English that takes away people's ability to express complex uh, thoughts and ideas. Uh, this term was the firstly used by George Orwell actually in the in this uh, novel 1984. Uh, features of Newspeak. So uh, it is in like satirical tone. We have you know we have, we have many uh, that uh, government scheme and program program which is uh, shows that it is uh, only for sake of people, but uh, in uh, not in every uh, every time, but uh, some of them are actually to exploit people. So these features, or we can say these uh, things are actually exploit the society of the mass of uh, Oceania. So first one is limited vocabulary. So uh, uh, Newspeak actually gives some kind of vocabulary which is only used, uh, should only should be used by, uh, by peoples of Oceania. This uh, simplified syntax is quite uh, uh, important and interesting feature of Newspeak. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, anyone will ask me the question and if I don't have answer, that what will I uh, do to save myself? That okay, the actually the question is uh, problematic. So give me the question, I'll fix the question, and then again ask me the question. So definitely I will give, I will uh, able to answer the question because now I I have uh, given you the question question. And uh, I have uh, I have to give you the answer. So the simplified sentence and uh, you speak is like that. That uh, whatever you have to speak, whatever you have to ask us, uh, I, we will say you this. Elimination and ambiguity and uh, political propaganda. The obvious one. This uh, new speak is like weapon of uh, of uh, party of Big Brother's party to uh, use of uh, citizens of Oceania. Restricted communication. Uh, no, not only restricted communication, but uh, also I can, uh, we can say this that uh, to control uh, people's mind and control their control their normal uh, discussion as well by newspaper. 
constant evolution uh, it means not constant evolution in positive way but uh, news pick is uh, constantly changed uh, by the uh, uh, based on your need of party uh, news pick and contemporary media putting news pick and contemporary media on one stage undercourse the importance of vigilance against the language manipulation and propaganda in all forms of communication while contemporary media operates within a democratic framework uh, where freedom of speech and press freedom are valued. The parallels with newspeak serve as a cautionary reminder of the dangers and unchecked power of importance of defending against attempt to control language and manipulate the public. Uh, this are contemporary media, we can say, are not totally veiled like uh, uh, newspeak, but uh, in some uh, cases we can see this, that uh, our uh, contemporary media is uh, have some kind of similarities with newspeak. Uh, similarities like uh, in terms of language and manipulation and propaganda and narrative control. And when we uh, using uh, this the newspeak kind of controlled language uh, with, con uh, with the contemporary media, so how can we forget Godi media, which is uh, mostly uh, many times uh, uh, discussed by sir in our class. So this uh, this Godi media, it is uh, it is like uh, I was thought that it was it is kind of myth or to criticize the the power. But when I was searching for this, I, I know I comes to know this that this Bodhi media word was uh, um, uh, firstly coined by Ravish Kumar. And Ravish Kumar is not a, not ordinary man; he's a well-known uh, reporter of uh, Indian media. Incorporating the term Bodhi media highlights the ongoing debates and criticism surrounding media manipulation, bias, and narrative control in contemporary society. Most of the Indian uh, media houses, which are completely biased and working in the interest of uh, current ruling government are called uh, Godi media. It is, uh, as Sir says, it is uh, almost similar like Modi media. So, uh, well, uh, while we uh, easily, we will find this kind of memes on, uh, on, uh, on the internet. The first one, it was, uh, it is about the Kisan Andolan, don't cover us, you are fake media. See, there is the hashtag as well, hashtag Godi media. So we can see this, that how popular it is. And uh, we will easily find this kind of means uh, because and the only this thing shows us that our uh, new contemporary media is not uh, not totally uh, covered by covered like new covered and controlled but like uh, like news. And the last one is quite interesting that uh, how government it is and how media uh, 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 media shows them. And let me conclude the presentation here. The concept of newspeak serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the dangers of unchecked power and the importance of defending against attempt to control language and manipulate a public opinion. In today's media landscape, a language manipulation, propaganda, and the creation of echo chambers are evident in challenging individuals to critically evaluate the information that they assume and seek out uh, alternative voices. These are my references and thank you. We can discuss the questions now. So my question is how does news speak, uh, affect communication in uh, 1984? Okay, so uh, communication you speak uh, um, uh, mostly affect communication because uh, it is uh, uh, it can restrict our communi uh, communication of oceania uh, mass of com oceania and uh, it will we can say totally control uh, the uh, communication and even uh, small conversation as well So my question is, how the purpose of newspeak can be defined in one line? Uh, in one line, uh, newspeak, uh, in one line I can say this, that uh, newspeak is kind of language which is uh, specially made up for controlling the communication to for, of, and discussion and uh, ultimately the minds of people. Thank you.
So hello everyone, very good afternoon to all of you. The second day of presentation, I am dealing with the topic Art is a double edged sword, the complex relationship between creativity and political political ideology in the artists of the plotting world. It's my personal information. It's a point to ponder that uh, I will discuss in the presentation. Let's start with the introduction. An uh, artist of the floating world by Kazo Ishiguro well into uh, the integrated relationship between the creativity and political journey from the serving, serving as a state propaganda machine to uh, grappling with the consequences of his past education as an artist. The novel explores how art can be both perspectively and challenging prevailing political ideology, emphasize the complexity of uh, balancing the individual uh, expression with societal expectations. About the novel, an artist of the floating world by uh, about the novel, artist of the uh, artist of the floating world by Kazuo Ishiguro is a comparing novel set in the post war in Japan. John is a historical novel published in 1986. The protagonist Masuji Ono emerges from Japanese military period as the former protagonist and artist. His journey against the backdrop of the nation grimping with the aftermath of a World War II and undergoing rapid societal transformation. About the novelist, he was uh, born in uh, 1914 in the uh, age of uh, uh, 169 in Japan, Nagasaki. Award uh, and honor prize, Nobel Prize in uh, seven, uh, 2017, Booker Prize in 1989, Coast Book Award 1986, Nobel Book Work. Uh, a uh, view of the hill and the uh, artist of the floating world and Kerala in the sun. Citizenship Japan until uh, 1918 and uh, uh, after the United Kingdom. He was a British novelist, screenwriter, musician, and short story writer. He is one of the most critical, acclaimed, and prized contemporary fictional author writing in English, having been awarded in 1970. Nobel Prize in Literature. <laughs> Art, is a pro Art is a propaganda. The title is the um, double S word. Is the uh, is the uh, uh, two type of this. Uh, sometimes art is like uh, is the creative work, and uh, that work is a uh, different way people seeing is. Uh, but uh, all people are not uh, uh, seeing in that way yeah, because uh, that IQ and uh, creativity of minds is uh, nothing to exchange and uh, grow uh, growing your mind uh, situation. That's. Uh, that's a sword. Is word is like a, a two type. Is a, like a, a showing and a decoration like. And a, a second one is like killing and other people to uh, that. That's uh, art, the propaganda. The quote by uh, Pablo Picasso. We all know that art is not truth. Art is lie that make a realized uh, truth. At least the truth is given to us to understand. The work title. An artist of floating word is the double substantive Yukio as tradition. The title of the novel is the uh, artist of the floating way. Means the floating uh, art is artist of uh, floating means the like a uh, flying and that uh, sometimes it's like a uh, flying is like a uh, smoking and the uh, uh, of the air. Jap Japanese art and at the same time is a uh, bright. That was important to West after the 20th century. An artist of the floating world illustrates how Masuji Ono's artist talent is harnessed to serve a nationalist agenda during the World War II. Example of Ono's painting glorify materialists and convey a political message of uh, loyalty to the state. Ma Masuji Ono, the protagonist and artist, is uh, commissioned to produce an artwork that serves to government's propaganda objective during the World War II, it reflects Ono's role in using his artistic talent to convey political message aimed at uh, promoting nationalistic ideology and really public support for World War effect. 
that's uh, sometimes uh, art is uh, uh, art is like a uh, propaganda. In the uh, use of uh, art is like a, a politic way. Is the uh, art is sometimes art is like showing and something is beautiful, but uh, sometimes art is like uh, in different ways, like a political use and uh, people uh, convey to war and uh, uh, inspire in the inner way by the art. Uh, second is art, artist freedom and political constraint. In uh, uh, the artist content with the uh, freedom and uh, recreation must be characteristic not only the perspective and uh, practice. The great the artist freely offer himself as the uh, and for his community by interpolis and uh, contradiction of his uh, community and externalization them in the language available to his community, his own freedom for his exiting world and his contemporary of uh, two creative and altogether the new one. Artist illusion is the unequal reality for life. Against art in politics, art is very largely a decade. It is so because of while the original culting from the art has remained the same. It contains the purpose have uh, radically changed. And uh, I have observed uh, one article by the objection of uh, two major perspectives. Uh, one is uh, the depolitization of the art, and second is the uh, aestheticization of art. Means the depolitization of art is like uh, leave uh, leave art alone. That never miss uh, miss uh, mix of uh, political. Uh, do like is the one way to that. Uh, see it that way and uh, the uh, aestheticization of politics. The politics is a different way. So, uh, put in that uh, that uh, situation never mix it both, and the so mixing of both the situation is the complex. And that uh, creation is the new circumstances for people and every day of the literature and everything. Political constant is the uh, political constant is the post with Japan. He desired creative autonomy but faces society pressures and government concertship, highlighting the co complexity of the navigate artists expressed in political changes, environment, the clash between artistic freedom and political content. It's when Masuji Ono reflect on the limitation of uh, impose on his artist expression. In the novel, artists of the floating methods like the uh, same situation is when Masuji Ono is uh, uh, sometimes it's like people is uh, uh, more uh, 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 creative and that uh, art work like uh, is artist. Masuji Ono is like artist and that art work is uh, uh, used for the other thing. It's like a uh, political and uh, people's uh, to in the in every situation. Art is the vision. Masuji Ono's uh, Masuji Ono serve as the form of uh, subversion and against societal norms and political ideology. This is the evidence when Ono reflect on his work. Directly like the uh, Ono's daughter Norika refused to conform on societal expectations, using their art as the meaning of personal expression and uh, asserting their individual autonomy. Masuji Ono and Norika used their art to challenging social, societal norms and political ideologies as the individual autonomy and provoking critical reflection through as the defined and alternative perspective in their artwork. They showcase the transformative power to, of art, the challenging authority and express dissent. That uh, is a subversion uh, of art is like a, a character of uh, Ono and his daughter. Is the uh, uh, sometimes is uh, 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 is like art is a uh, subversion because Ono's uh, uh, art and painting is used for a nation, but uh, in in the past situation is good and bad thing, but in the future that's uh, is a different way. It's like uh, people are hating that uh, you are in the war and something big and destroy the. Uh, World and something is like a Japanese uh, world or say uh, that uh, uh, know about this uh, situation that uh, never uh, relationship with uh, that person and is reduction through the art. An artist of the floating world, Masuji Ono find reduction through the art as the trans 
transition from serving political agenda to reflecting on personal introspection and re recolonization. His artist expression evolved from glorified nationalism to impact in everyday life, leading to moral growth, growth, growth and quest for autonomy of uh, facilities by transformative power of art. So, uh, art played a crucial role in a uh, facilitated Ono's moral growth and quest for autonomy. The uh, say by Ono in my my painting, I found not only image of the world around me but also reflection of my journey from elevation to redemption. Is the uh, redemption is like a, a related to the religious uh, religious things like a sin and uh, a holiness. Uh, people is like uh, I am uh, doing the thing is bad and now I am. Uh, it's like a prayer sheet and uh, that uh, is the I am you know that uh, I I do that work is like a nation for that I am I feel redemption in through to my art. That's conclusion of the presentation. In, in conclusion, an artist of the floating world incredibly explored the relationship between creativity and political ideology. Masuji on his journey illuminated art's dude nature, surviving political agenda while also offering the path to personal redemption. The novel prompt reflect on the ethical norms of artist's expression and transformative power of art in the challenging, privileging ideology. And it's for references. And thank you. If you have any question, feel free to ask me. Any comment question? Is what ways to governments and author authoritarian regime utilize art as tool for propaganda in the modern world? Yes. Uh, the government and authorization remain until art as a tool for uh, propaganda in the modern world. In the modern world, is like a so, uh, um, um, artist as like a. a, a Offering to uh, you uh, have pay money and a uh, goody goody thing to speak uh, about the nation and uh, it's like a uh, uh, it's like a political pa uh, parties uh, speak to people uh, uh, speak to people uh, you uh, pay, made painting for our party and uh, we will uh, pay you something and uh, it's free for you and. My question is, can art still be affected as a form of political activism in the age of social media and digital communication? Absolutely. The political activities in the age of social media and digital, uh, digital communication. In the uh, social media uh, social media platform, uh, is the art used for is like uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter and uh, Facebook and everything where uh, posting your uh, artwork and uh, you promote uh, and uh, uh, increase to people's mind and uh, capture to thought uh, by uh, social media platform. So I am and thank you. So good afternoon everyone. Today I am going to give my presentation on the power of manipulation, exploring control and deception in George Orwell's 1984. This is my personal details. This is the table of content. Introduction. 
1984 is the dystopian novel published in 1949 that depicts a to totalitarian society controlled by the ruling party and its leader, Big Brother. The story is set in a nation called Oceania. It's a fictional, uh, fictional nation, one of three uh, per perpetually uh, warring to totalitarian states that control the entire world. The novel follows Winston uh, Smith, a member of the outer party who works for the Ministry of Truth, rewriting history to uh, conform to the party's propaganda. Winston uh, dreams of a re uh, rebellion against the oppressive rule of a big brother and the newspeak, enforced by the thought police. Uh, central themes include uh, totalitarianism, mass surveillance, historical re uh, revisionism, and uh, philosophical concepts like a double thing, holding a two contradictionary beliefs uh, simultaneously. Orwell's invented language, uh, newspeak limits freedom of thought. The novel has had a profound impact for popularizing terms like a big brother and a thought police and inspiring many modern concepts of uh, privacy, sen censorship and a repressive control uh, by authorities. It uh, stands as a warning against uh, totalitarian control and repressive regimes. So uh, here is the many, uh, manipulation techniques that are used in the uh, novel. The, the first one is the propaganda. propaganda. In the novel 1984, propaganda works as a manipulation by distorting facts and uh, spreading poly politically charged message to control people's thought and beliefs. The party uses propaganda to shape a public opinion, erase records of the past and substitute falsified information to align with a changing policies. Through uh, censorship and uh, false uh, falsification, individuals like Winston Smith are both victim, uh, victims and uh, per, per, perpetrators of a propaganda, ultimately manipulating reality to serve the uh, party's agenda. Then the another one is a censorship. In 1984, censorship serves as a uh, pivotal tool employed by, by the ruling party to, um, party to maintain control and suppress dissent. This mirrors the censorship uh, st strategies utilized by the British government during World War II to shape public perception perception and uh, support for the allied forces. Uh, historical uh, uh, revisionism. In 1984, historical revisionism is the cornerstone of the party's control over society. Through the Ministry of Truth, records are uh, systematically altered to fit the party's current narrative. Erasing any evidence that uh, contradicts its uh, ideology, this manipulation extends to all forms of media and uh, education. Here, here are uh, some pictures. You can see in the first picture there uh, where uh, they are. Um, you can see that censorship is uh, is the power to make two plus two equal five or three or where, uh, whatever people power say it is. It means that we have to um, we have to do whatever power will say. If they say that it's a uh, night, then it's a night. If it's a day, then it's a day. Then ma manipulation of the truth in the novel. In 1984, the party control uh, controls over uh, controls truth through the Ministry of Truth, altering historical records of uh, to fit propaganda known as uh, rectification. Winston's Winston's role involves uh, rewriting history to align with the party's narrative by changing newspaper articles, altering photographs, and fabricating speeches and reports. This, perpetu thus, this perpetuates the party's control over truth, ensuring a favorable perception of its leader and ideology among the population. Means they are hiding the truth and uh, uh, they, are, they are giving us that what we want in our uh, ruler. That if we want our ruler like this, they will make that uh, person like that. Then here are the uh, how they did. Ministry of Truth alters records uh, for a propaganda. Winston uh, revised his history to match party's narrative. Uh, then uh, that uh, how right now party is saying they are changing the history uh, uh, according to party's narrative. Rectification uh, updates accounts to reflect current agenda. Fabrication, false speeches, reports, and statistics. Then uh, party controls all uh, sources to suppress dissent. Memory hall destroys uh, inconvenient documents. Double think and newspeak limit to and uh, expression. Manipulation ensures party's totalitarian rule. Then uh, manipulation of language. Explanation of newspeak. 
Newspeak is a control language developed by the party to limit freedom of thought and expressionism. Its purpose is to narrow the range of a thought by el eliminating words and concepts that could challenge the party's authority and or ideology by reducing language to a simplified form. The party seeks to control the way people think and communicate, making uh, rebellious or critical thoughts impossible to express. Here are some uh, examples of newspeak and uh, newspeak words and implications. So the first word, is, uh, first is the double thing: the acceptance of contradictory beliefs. Uh, simultaneously, it allows individuals to believe two opposing ideas without acknowledging the contradictions, thereby preventing. In the novel, uh, character like Vincent, they know that uh, the government are doing wrong, but uh, still they are with uh, them at the end. If we see in a normal life, like uh, if we, uh, someone is smoking, then they, uh, they know that the smoking is injurious for health, but still they are smoking. And uh, there is a meme going on uh, in uh, social media. There is, is a, it's a Gujarati meme where uh, he uh, the man who speaks on the road and then uh, there is a i don't know if uh, she is a um, journalist or a social influ influencer so she asked that uh, you did this it is it a wrong is it a wrong so he says like he says that uh, but uh, but uh, still he uh, he knows that it's wrong but still he does uh, that that is the double thing that you know uh, that's wrong, but you are still supporting that. Then uh, another is the thought crime. Any thought or belief that contradicts the principles of uh, Ignos, uh, Ingsoc, English uh, socialism, it criminalizes dissenting thoughts, reinforcing the party's control over the pop population uh, thinking. So if even if we have a thought that uh, they are wrong, that is a crime. For example, if uh, if we, uh, we are, there is a, uh, if we speak about uh, any god or goddess, so we have, if we have any thought, then we have to uh, uh, make it to ourselves. If uh, we will uh, uh, tell anyone, then they will be like, uh, there will be like um, a big problem that they will um, aim you in every uh, way. In simple way, they will uh, troll you. Then a good thing. Approved thoughts or ideas uh, sanctioned by the party, it promotes a con uh, con conformity and obedience to party's ideology. One person, someone who has been erased from existence for uh, challenging the party, it signifies the complete er eradication of dissent and serves as a warning to others. Then uh, if uh, we will go against the party, then they will, uh, there will be no, like we, uh, right now, uh, Rahul Gandhi and uh, Modi, the, uh, Modi, then uh, now Rahul Gandhi, uh, Congress party is like an old person. So that and then a uh, duck speech, uh, mindless speech or a uh, parroting party slogans without engaging in uh, critical thinking. It reinforces the party's control over language and the thought by discouraging independent expression. Expression. Then many manipulation of per, uh, perception. That how they manipulate us. Then uh, here is the telescreen constant uh, surveillance devices used for monitoring and uh, propaganda the uh, dissemination. Now here you can see in uh, there is a in movie we uh, we have seen that there is a uh, TV screen. So then another is the propaganda shapes cities citizens perceptions of reality blurring lines between public and private space. Then uh, party slogans and uh, big brother images. Then uh, there is the slogans like war is a peace. Freedom is a slavery and ignorance is a strength. Manipulates language to confuse and control. The many, um, many, uh, manip manipulation uh, with the language is also a big um, part of the manipulation. Then Big Brother is watching you, insta instills uh, fear and obedience through constant surveillance. Like uh, if we say, uh, you can see in that uh, picture that uh, there is everywhere there is a picture that uh, Big Brother is watching. Then uh, Big Brother's image is there. Here are. You can see that these are the slogan that war is the peace, ignorance is the strength, and freedom is the slavery. Then a manipulation of emotion. Fear and manipulation. Fear is viewed uh, as a powerful tool to suppress dissent and maintain control. So we uh, we have, we were all, uh, everyone is uh, manipulated with the fear. Like in childhood, uh, we uh, we were used to uh, listen from our mother that uh, that, uh, that was a fear that uh, mother of darkness. So we can 
uh, say that the mother of our darkness, that Andharanima and Big Brother both are same. They don't exist, but we are still fear from it. Then emotional manipulation, especially uh, through fear, ensures obedience to the party. And then when our, our mom says that, and then we, we also sleep. Then examples of surveillance and uh, punishment. Telescreens. Telescreens, uh, thought police, uh, and uh, room number 101, which is uh, room number 101, was a uh, punish punishment capitalized on individual worst fear. Then public executions and uh, dis disappearance serve as a uh, determined reinforcing fear and uh, obedience. Like, if uh, if we can say that, uh, that is a that is a Bollywood movie and that is a dialogue that uh, uh, Soja nahi to Dur dur tak nahi to So that, 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 one, uh, that one we can say that uh, that fear Then effects of manipulation Impact on society and individuals leads to a society devoid of individuality, critical thinking, and freedom. Citizens become com complacent, accepting parties' propaganda without question. Then uh, examples of uh, characters who who got uh, may, uh, manipulated. The first is Winston uh, Smith, initially succumbs to manipulation and later rebels against party control. Then uh, Julia initially rebels but succumbs to uh, manipulation bit and uh, betrayal under pressure that uh, he, he betrays Winston, uh, we know. Then the power of propaganda, a manipulation in historical context. Propaganda versus uh, public opinion. Propaganda rarely determines public opinion despite early theorist uh, confession. Uh, assumption about the ma masses. Authoritarian saw the public as uh, having limited intelligence, requiring simple slogans. Democrats viewing propaganda as uh, informing the uh, public. Then covert versus overt propaganda. Then uh, awareness as a uh, defense and uh, there, there are examples that social media manipulates corporate branding, partisan news, and government PR conspiracy, and conspiracy theories. Then uh, manipulation in India, a multifaceted issue. May, uh, media manipulation, certainly, certainly media outlets in India show uh, bias toward political parties, spreading misinformation, and uh, shaping public opinion. Uh, we, uh, we, we see every day in news that uh, how they are uh, biased toward uh, the ruling party and against the uh, party, uh, another party. Then political manipulation, political parties engage in uh, uh, gerrymandering, water buying and spreading false information to gain power. Then social media manipulation, fake accounts, bot and paid trolls on uh, social media platforms spread of propaganda and uh, misinformation to influence uh, public discourse. Then uh, corporate manipulation, Price fixing, pollution, and monopolistic behavior harm consumers and uh, stifle competition in the uh, business sector. Here are some pictures. You can see that uh, here is the uh, uh, election motto that they, they will uh, give us uh, that sankalpa patra that we will do if you choose us, then we will do this. But this is also a mani manipulating technique. Then we uh, we are getting. Uh, we are uh, people be like yes sir, if we will choose them then this, this will happen then another picture is that my friend uh, sent me a few days ago about uh, her mother got a call from uh, he was saying that he is from a uh, uttar pradesh and as a job from uttar pradesh he said that uh, your son your son is the kind of convict of the rep and the fun fact was they are only three daughters they have no brother so you can say, so, so they she was she was educated so she know that uh, and, and if it happened to in a rural area who are not uh, educated enough so they will be like uh, they will not even believe to, to their own son they they will be like they don't want so it's like that they, they manipulated them like this then there uh, another one is that uh, where is it uh, so, without me. <laughs> so you can say that we, uh, we, uh, we oftenly got this type of message from families like send to 10 people 
if you uh, if you love your mother then sang then uh, once i was uh, show uh, watching shorts on youtube so there was a uh, informative video and at the end of the video uh, the speaker was the ai generated so you were saying that agar aap bhi mere tarah ram bhagwan ne mante to like kare so it was like uh, the video was informative and you and then he became religious like we were uh, the, some, some people were fearing that ai will be um, hijack the humanity but uh, here we can say that he, they are also following the uh, religions then a comparison to real life manipulation similarly similarity uh, similarities to 1984 propaganda government share public opinion and control narratives that uh, they will uh, the uh, opinion and narratives always will be uh, in the path of the government then uh, censorship and uh, psychological manipulation uh, like fear I, as i say then reflection on 1984 significance of manipulation central theme illustrating uh, uh, pervasive control by uh, by the party highlights danger of distor distor distorted truth under totalitarian regimes orwell's warning that ha, what he warned uh, everyone in his novel cautionary detail about danger of totalitarian and in, in, emphasizes vigilance against uh, erosion of uh, civil liberties then power of control and deception demonstrates uh, impact of control and deception in society once again ange once uh, once against unchecked authority and manip manipulation of the truth then here is the conclusion in conclusion 1984 by george orwell vividly portray portrays the insidious nature of manipulation and its devastating effects on uh, society and individuals through uh, themes of control and deception orwell warns against the danger of totalitarianism and the erosion of uh, truth and freedom the novel serves as a timely reminder of the importance of uh, vigilance against the oppressive regimes and manipulation of information and language to control perception and behavior as we reflect on orwell's uh, cautionary tale we are compelled to exa examine and critic uh, instances of manipulation in our uh, own societies recognizing the enduring the uh, relevance of 1984 in understanding the power dynamics at uh, play in the world around us then here is my references and uh, if anyone have a questions you can ask So, how can Indian tackle the complex challenges of uh, manipulated across various uh, sectors such as uh, media, politics, social media, corporate, religious, uh, governance, and uh, societal harmony? In your point of view. So, in my point of view, that India can tackle the media uh, by media. That media shows the reality and uh, fact-checked news, not the false news. Then. Uh, politics that uh, uh, they they are also uh, stay true to, true to their self that what uh, whatever they promise they uh, complete that and also the trans uh, transparency of the what and all then uh, social media is also that uh, everyone is uh, uh, head, heading on a s social media uh, and use, using a so social media is a medium to um, for a false news then uh, corporate that uh, also uh, like we we know we know that uh, um, some uh, government uh, government uh, government and the company owners both are uh, like uh, related they are uh, working together everyone says that so there must be a transparency that even if it's a private uh, private company then they were they practice and there must be a law like uh, not too much high then uh, religious Uh, and religious also that everyone should uh, respect another people's religions too that like uh, there was also an, uh, uh, an instagram reel that agar aap hindu hai to red color ka heart comment mein kare aur agar aap musliman hai to green color ka heart comment mein kare so don't do that rather than uh, respect each one's uh, uh, each other's religion then uh, and also uh, and, and that will bring uh, the so societal harmony anyone else
Jashi, my question is, uh, how do characters in novel 1984 respond to manipulation and what does their behavior reveal about the effects of manipulation on the both society and individuals? So, uh, the effect of manipulation in the characters of the novel were uh, very different, like a person uh, who, uh, who, who was uh, obedient to manipulation and he supported uh, the uh, he supported the party and he also sent his uh, children to a third police. Then uh, another one is a uh, Vincent who was a uh, uh, who who was a uh, who know that uh, party is wrong and he tried to uh, go against them too. But uh, still, at the end, he has to succumb uh, in uh, manipulation of them. Then uh, Julia is also she was a uh, she was a very uh, she she was also against the uh, uh, party and her ideology was also against the party at the end of the uh, novel or we can say that he, uh, she chose to betray winston and uh, choosing the part thank you Good afternoon, everyone. Today, my topic is George Orwell, 1984, is Marxist study. This is my personal information, table of content about author. author. George Orwell, full name is Eric Arthur Plum. He, he was a born, uh, he was a born uh, 25 June 1903 uh, in Motihari, in Bengal, Bengal, India. He was a, uh, he was a there uh, 21 January 1950 in London, in London, England. Occupation. He was a novelist, essayist, and critic. He is a notable work is Animal Farm in 1984. Introduction to George, George Orwell's uh, 1984. 1984 novel by English author George Orwell published in 1949 49 is a warning against totalitarianism. Orwell uh, wrote 1984 as a warning after a year of uh, brooding on twin minas of Nazism and Stalinism. The novel depicts a state where think differently is punished with torture. People are moni monitored constantly and party propaganda surpresses free. People are monitored constantly and party propaganda surpresses free speech and thought. Western symbolized civil, uh, civilized value and his defect highlight their vulnerability in the face of powerful state. Overview of Marxism. Marxism. Historical concept. Marxism is body of uh, doc, doctrine developed by Karl Marx and it is laser action by Frederick, uh, Frederick Engel in the mid 90th century. It originally Constituted three related ideas: a philosophical anthropology, a theory of history, history, and an economic and political program. Core concept: Marxism is a socio-economic theory emphasizing the struggle between ruling class and working class. Ideological impact: Marxist Marxist theory have significantly influenced political, politics, economics, and social movement worldwide. Brief overview, Marxist ideology, historical materialism, the view that the material condition and economic activity of society shape the, uh, its politi political, social, and inte intellectual life over time. 
last uh, class struggle the idea that women society are fundamentally divided into two classes the bourgeois and uh, proletarian this class have inherently conflict uh, co conflict interest which lead to uh, class struggle surplus value surplus value marx argue that capi capitalist exploit work, uh, worker by paying them less less than the full value their labor creates yes extracting surplus value from the their work criticism of capitalism marx was highly critic, critical of capi, capitalism which he saw is a exploitative economic system that uh, concentrated power and wealth in the hands of bourgeois bourgeois the expense of worker george orwell's novel 1984 through marxist land oceania society reflect marxist class division ruling middle and uh, proles it proles is a working class which which winston's hope for proles revolt mirrors marxist proletarian revolution ideals novel suggests proles lack capital uh, cap capability or conscious consciousness to effect, effectively reveal challenging marxist theory goldstein manifesto manifesto advocate for a soci socialist ideals against party authoritarianism marx marxist solution like appropriation yeah. appropriation of the production and elimination of private property are present Marxist theme in 1984 Sur uh, surveillance state 1984 showcased the omnipresent surveillance reflecting reflecting ma Marxist critique state control over citizen news manipul manipulation or Orwell's work highlight propaganda propaganda and media uh, media manipulation uh, alleging with the Marxist view on information control socialism socialism and communism critic over uh, orwell critic the totalitarian regime and distort distort the so socialist and communist ideal under the party group oceania the party represent a perversion of the socialist revolution exploiting the masses instant liberating them revelance to contemporary society 1984 to the world we can see echoes of orwell's thing in modern surveillance government control and manipulation of truth marxist analysis today by using marxist idea we can better understand issue like wealth inequality inequality power imbalance and social movement fighting for change understanding power and inequality mark marxism help, helps of see how some group how world power and wealth why others struggle it also highlight how system maintain this inequalities conclusion in summary 1984 by george orwell speak a volume about the dangerous power of views and loss for some freedom looking through marxist lens we have seen how it stem resource in today world like surveillance inequality and resistance by un understanding how power economy and social stu structure intervene we are better equipped to challenge injustice and strive for fairer society this is my re resource thank you So Jay, my question is that what are some examples of the ruling class maintaining control over the lower classes in the novel? The ruling ruling class maintaining control over uh, like uh, constantly uh, manipulation, uh, constantly manip manipulation and and uh, uh, authority of surveillance through through ruling class maintaining um, maintaining. control over lower class
So, Jay, how does the Orwell board find the potential working class in uh, 1980? In, in 1984, uh, uh, Orwell portrayed the proletarian flor, in uh, uh, his uh, surveillance and menu, menu surveillance and uh, party ruling through through uh, through portrayed the working class. Thank you. So hello everyone, uh, myself Cyril Vaitha and I am uh, going to deal with a deceptive narrator unraveling truth in Drishyam and an artist of the floating world. So these are uh, my personal information, uh, table of content. And uh, first of all, I, I will uh, start with uh, introduction. I asked ChatGPT to introdu uh, introduce this uh, both uh, character in a very well manner. So, ChatGPT give me this answer like uh, meet uh, Vijay Salgaukar, a, hum a humble uh, cable operator with a remarkable talent or navigating moral ambiguity. Enter the world of Masuji Wano, an esteemed Japanese artist and uh, haunted by the shadow of his past. Uh, Vijay, a devoted family man uh, willing to bend the truth to protect those uh, he loves. So, Masuji Ono, a conflicted figure grappling with the consequences of his uh, wartime actions in uh, post-World War II in Japan. Uh, both characters invite us uh, into their uh, integrate uh, worlds where truth and deception uh, intervene challenging uh, challenging our perceptions so join us as we delve into captivating uh, narrative of uh, vijay salgaukar and masuji ono where the pursuit of truth unveiling the complexity uh, complexities of human nature so my question uh, of the uh, presentation is will both Vijay and Masuji Ono success uh, in their uh, motives or not. So the unreliable uh, narrator according to Wolfwitz changes in how subjectivity is viewed will uh, unviability be reflected in the way, way uh, reliable or unreliable narrator uh, narration is presented. So uh, both the Masuji Ono and the Vijay Sardaukar uh, is the uh, in the, uh, both work, they both are uh, uh, unreliable narrator because uh, uh, the perfect narr uh, narration uh, as, the, the, as the definition of the perfect narr uh, narrator is not uh, defined in that both character. So the Masuji Ono and Vijay Salgaukar optimize the concept of the unreliable narrator. Skin, uh, skillfully, they both manipulate uh, perception of uh, suit their uh, agendas. So the Masuji Ono is the, the introspection, the artist of the uh, floating world, and Vijay uh, strateg uh, strategic deception in Drishyam. They both uh, were challenging audience to discern the truth and amidst the subjective real, uh, realities and uh, enriching their narratives uh, towards complexity. So the, in the narrative deception, so according to Mangattu, the narrative revolves around the efforts of the protagonist to cover up murder to save his family. So in uh, the subjective reality, both Vijay and Masuji Ono they try to manipulate the truth according to their circumstances and to save his family. So in a moral ambiguity, they, bo uh, they both uh, create blur line between the truth and the, uh, the hidden uh, manner. So in the narrative control, they uh, both uh, shape events to their version of reality. In the cultural context, 
Vijay navigates the rural India of uh, Goa and uh, Masuji Ono grapples with uh, post World War II in Japan. Family loyalty both uh, privatize his family and he wants to uh, save his family at anyhow. Uh, challenges in uh, perfection, uh, audience question truth and amidst their deceptive narrat uh, narratives. So in the character contrast, uh, Masuji Ono is uh, the character of an artist of uh, floating world and he is an uh, unreliable narrator. He is a protagonist. Uh, we can say that uh, he is a protagonist of the, um, an artist of the floating world novel. And uh, he is the person who lives in Japan. And uh, he is a, a painter. He is an artist. And uh, he is belonging for, uh, uh, for, from Japan and his, uh, his time era is World War II. So Vijay uh, Salgaukar is the cable operator in r uh, rural Goa and Ono was a protagonist and artist where the Salgaukar is the modest life. Both prioritize his family and the crisis. Differentially, uh, Ono reflects the Sal uh, Salgaukar ex uh, disciplinary. Ono is uh, dis, uh, depicted in a literary novel and uh, Salgaukar is portrayed visual in a film. So a uh, question that we want to figure it out. So in uh, Drishyam, uh, uh, Vijay Salgaukar in both uh, in, in the last sequence of uh, Drishyam 2, we find out that uh, Vijay Salgaukar is uh, try to protect his uh, daughter Anju from the authority and he got a success success in the to say her daughter his daughter so in uh, the novel in the same manner uh, the motive of master Giovanni to hide the truth is that uh, he wants to uh, marry his uh, uh, older daughter norika uh, sorry younger daughter norika and uh, he got success in that uh, motive so uh, in conclusion uh, both Drisham and an artist of the floating world, uncertainty explored the incredible web of uh, deception and its uh, reverberating uh, consequences. While Vijay, uh, Vijay's triumph in uh, safeguarding his family strength stands in stark contrast to Masuji ambiguous resolution. Their narratives and converge on themes of morality and familiar familial devotion. Despite disparate cultural background and narrative formats, both tells compel audience to ponder the complexities of truth and the enduring allure of unreliable narrator. This uh, picture was made by Microsoft uh, designer. So these are uh, some of my references. And thank you. If you have any question, you feel free to ask. So, Hiral, as you said that the theme of guilt is important in uh, an artist of the floating world. So, can you tell me that what role does it play in the movie Drishya? So, yes, the uh, theme of guilt is important as important in the Drishyam uh, movie, uh, the both Drishyam movies also, that uh, the the theme uh, theme of the guilt uh, drives the uh, drives the Vijay Salgaukar towards uh, protect his family at any how at any cost uh, from the authorities. So here is my question: In many times in the novel, Masuji Ono accept that he is not telling the reader the complete truth truth or that he is, he is mistaken or does not re remember the event properly. So, uh, yes, uh, in uh, as like uh, Master Giono, uh, Vijay Salgaukar also pretend in the both movies that he he don't rem uh, he doesn't remember the past and suddenly he, he gone in that uh, flashback and suddenly he come in the present. So, uh, as like Master Giono, uh, Vijay Salgaukar also act like that. Thank you.
Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to deal with the topic of exploring exist existential trends in a contemporary Bollywood, a comparative analysis through the lens of Vladimir and Estrepo. These are my personal information, table of content. Uh, introduction of uh, existentialism. Uh, according to Merriam Webster, a uh, chiefly twen uh, 20th century philosophical movement embracing diverse uh, doctrines but uh, cent centering on an analysis individual existence in an unfathomable un uh, un universe and the plight of the individual who must assume unlimited responsibility uh, for acts of the free will without any certain knowledge of what is right or what is wrong or good or bad. Uh, existential elements in waiting for the god uh, Existential literature explores man's eth essential misery, sorrow and the meaning of uh, existence. Uh, waiting for god is a uh, uh, is rich rich in existential elements uh, depicting characters grappling with loneliness and the problems of death um, the play defends individual freedom of choice as seen in the character's decision uh, to wait for the unclear figure mr godot uh, time time in the play reflects the character's mental state with vladimir and astragon struggling with uh, boredom uh, and the slowness of time passing uh, despite their efforts to kill time the characters remain frustrated and hopeless in their pitiable existence uh, characters also uh, grapples with the meaninglessness of the of their existence despite uh, counting to live uh, for example, here I have a conversation between uh, Vladimir and Estragon. Uh, Estragon and Vladimir choose, uh, choose to wait for Mr. Godot, whose identity is unclear to them. And Estragon talks about uh, incapability and ignorance uh, to uh, recognize Mr. Godot. He says, personally, I wouldn't know him. I, I never saw him. As Estragon and Vladimir have cho chosen waiting. Vladimir says he didn't uh says for sure he had come uh estragon let's go uh, vladimir said uh, we can't estragon why not vladimir we we are waiting for the godot uh he, introduction of samuel beckett uh samuel beck uh, born and born on april 13 1906 uh, 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 fox rock country dublin ireland uh death on 22nd December 1989, Paris, France, uh, occupation author, critic, and playwright, notable achievement, winner of the uh, Nobel Prize of Literature 1969, uh, known for writing uh, in both French and English, uh, and he is the be best known for the, his uh, an attendant Godot, uh, 1959, uh, 52, waiting for Godot. Uh, Second one is ex existentialism in a contemporary Bollywood. Uh, Indian Hindi films industry, uh, which is popularly known as Bollywood, is very old and producing great number of films. Uh, there are many appreciative movies. To find a philosophical and highly intellectual movies is still very difficult. Uh, existentialism is a modern foreign concept so indian movies representing this concept are rare and unique uh, here are uh, uh, some selected hindi movies like uh, aakho dekhi dil dosi uh, etc uh, the epilogue in which existentialism existential themes and uh, uh, similar concepts are uh, represented uh, vladimir and estragon uh, a comparative study uh, here are the characteristics of both uh, comparative characteristics of uh, Vladimir and Estragon. Uh, appearance uh, in Vladimir La is uh, taller, thin, clean, shaven, and uh, Estragon is shorter and unshaven. Uh, personality uh, in personality, Vladimir is more intellectual and optimistic, and uh, uh, Estragon is uh, simple minded and pessimistic. Uh, Vladimir's speech eloquent or philosophical and Estragon's uh, shorter sentence and less articulate. Uh, relationship with, uh, in relationship with others, uh, Vladimir is more social and, and, and he also tries to 
maintain a sense of purpose. Uh, in uh, Estragon, he is more possessive follows Vladimir's lead is uh, easily influenced. Uh, in the attitude towards waiting for Godot, Vladimir believes in the possibility of Godot's uh, arrival and Estragon most, uh, is more skeptical, uh, skeptical about Godot's ex uh, existence. Uh, physical action in, in physical actions, Vladimir is more energetic, and Estragon is uh, more lethargic. Emotional in emotional resilience, uh, Vladimir appearance more stable emotionally provides uh, comfort to Estragon, and Estragon exhibits emotional vul vulnerability seeks re reassurance from uh, Vladimir. Uh, uh, Fourth one is similar characters in Bollywood films. Uh, here are some examples for of Bollywood films characters which are partially related with the character of uh, Vladimir and Estragon. First movie I have chosen uh, Munna Bhai and BBS. Uh, in that Munna Bhai, in the film Munna Bhai and Circuit, uh, both are partially uh, similar. Uh, partially have similar kind of uh, uh, characteristics with Vladimir and uh, Estragon. Uh, in and Circuit, both uh, both are uh, both were uh, uh, both were suffered with the existential crisis. Uh, Munnabha experiences uh, an identity crisis by posing as a med medical student to please her, his father. Uh, ethical dilemmas arise as Munnabha and Circuit, uh, Circuit engage in the questionable practices to assist patients. Emotional challenge surface as both characters confront the uh, consequences of their actions and depiction. Uh, guilt and remorse weigh heavily to heavily on Munnabai as he forms a genuine connection in the me medical field. Uh, second movie is Shole. Uh, in Shole, the main character Jai and Viru face existential crisis akin to Vladimir and Estragon's from Waiting for Godot. Uh, existential crisis, uh, Jai and Viru like uh, Vladimir and Estragon grapples with the meaninglessness of uh, their lives and futility of their actions in chaotic world. Uh, search for the purpose. Similar of Vladimir and Estragon waiting for Godot, Jai and Viru embark on a quest for a purpose. Whatever it's, uh, it's in their friendship, their adventures or uh, their ev eventual confrontation, uh, confrontation with the uh, antagonist. Uh, isolation and despair. Uh, both pairs uh, experience moments uh, for isolation and despair uh, and also questioning uh, their choice and the availability uh, of their faith. Uh, bond of friendship, uh, despite their existential struggles, Jay and Viru like Vladimir and Estragon finds the solace and strength in the in their deep bond of friendship and which and which becomes a central pillar in the in their journey. Uh, in uh, conclusion, we can say that um, Bollywood characters like uh, Munna Bhai Circuit, uh, Jai and Viru mirrors the Samuel Bucket's uh, archetypes, uh, embodying the existential themes amid social societal constraints, and they also navigate life's absurd absurdity with humor, humor and camera camaraderie grappling with existential question. Uh, Jai and Viru like Vladimir and Estragon face a seemingly futile struggle against external forces and yet uh, their loyalty serves as a beacon uh, of hope. Uh, th th uh, through these characters, Bollywood reflects a universal, universal human experience for grappling with existential dilemmas. Uh, the comparison sheds light, uh, light on the enduring relevance of existential theme in contemporary cinema, offering audience a uh, lens for a contemplat contemplating the human condition. Here are my references and thank you. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Thank you. 
in my question is how does waiting for God demonstrate everything is self things? Uh, waiting for God to demonstrate existential themes like uh, absurdity, in, uh, absurdity in their uh, both characters' life, meaninglessness, and uh, so on. So, Harthi, my question is for you that how do the characters of Jay and Viru in Shole reflect the existential uh, themes present in Lagamir and Esther one from Waiting for God? Uh, Jay and Viru reflect the central existence. Uh, there are uh, they both uh, both pairs have a similar kind of uh, existential crisis and uh, uh, another. Uh, 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 similar themes is the bondage of uh, their companionship. Uh, they reflect uh, uh, that reflect existential themes in a similar in a both. Thank you. Hello, I am Dhatri Parmar and today is my topic of presentation is Man or Manufacture? Redefining Humanities through Biopunk Narratives. The concept of biopunk has emerged as a compelling subgenre of scientific fiction uh, in the 1980s period and it challenges the narratives and how the humans are made and the idea of the engineering, bioengineering. The uh, literary and cinematic works such as 1984, Ex Machina, Blade Runner and The Creator uh, redefining humanity and uh, this also raises the question of ethical implication of technology in the human lives and its advancement and the question which arises is that how it depicts and explore the blurring distinction between what is human and what is artificial intelligence and how there is an ethical implication in there or is there any consciousness is there any personhood in artificial intelligence that is the question is raised by that so first of all what is cyberpunk uh, cyberpunk emerged as the, in early 1980s as a postmodern genre and it re, uh, represents the virtual reality where the computers and uh, the surveillance and all would be there and in that case the biopunk has emerged uh, within this genre and biopunk includes biohackers, biotech and mega corporation and oppressive government and it also based on the DNA idea. It also explores the darker side of the bioengineering. Um, but if we define biopunk then with the pro uh, project, genome project uh, by the Francis S. Collins uh, during the 1990s to 2003 he researched upon the human DNA. And through the, that human DNA, he uh, tried to uh, give this uh, summary about how the human DNA works. He defined the DNA, like how the human behavior is uh, shaped. In uh, With this uh, project, there is the emergence of a biopunk genre. The, it talks about the liquid modernity in the postmodern time. There, uh, we cannot define the modernity. In that case, uh, the behavior of human, uh, everything is very fluid, like a water. So we cannot define anything particular. And if we talk about the key themes, then it talks about human enhancement, bioengineering and corporate control among the society. And this also uh, challenges the narrative that how can we define human in this case? Uh, this translation to cyberpunk to biopunk is uh, moreover cyberpunk is uh, based upon the computer and corporate world on the other hand biopunk is focusing upon the development of bioengineering and through this how the artificial intelligence get the consciousness and the human like emotions and uh, 
uh, through this uh, scheme argues in her in his article uh, that this raises the question this blurs the boundaries that how a human can behave or humanity can behave uh, if we're talking about particularly that it is a critical dystopia and it talks about the darker future and there is not a prediction like how the artificial intelligence would be with the humans in the future world and that raises the question ethical question of how we will define the humanity first uh, take a look at the 1984 uh, it is the reading that there is a possibility it seems that news peak uh, showed how controlling language uh, and information shapes the reality uh, humans from the very beginning, uh, if we look at the evolution, then whatever is not needed in human body, it automatically disappears by the time. And here in the 1984, Newspeak does the same. Is, uh, it is controlling the human language. And that means by controlling language, they are eliminating human thoughts and that uh, connected with the human DNA. And that means human will not uh, think in certain way in the future. Uh, another thing is, uh, or party's propaganda can be uh, metaphorically uh, considered as a re-engineering like they are uh, giving certain kinds of thoughts to the people now they are uh, doing a kind of you know, a practice with the human dna in that way they are controlling the human mind and that basically leads to the bioengineering part of the human another is a modification of the language similarly a language is connected with the mind and that basically connected with the mind and if we control the mind of the human, then, then it leads to the dis uh, disastrous effect in the time. Uh, another thing is a uh, calibacy group. And this calibacy group is uh, focuses upon the control of basic human emotions, cognition and sexuality. They are controlling this. Now, controlling this basic human emotion, they can control human beings. So that also question. Uh, the very idea of a uh, party. Another is a lack of uh, lack of privacy and alienation. This also can be uh, untrustworthy uh, controlling of body. By this, they are controlling the body of human. So basically, that leads to the question of how will de uh, define the humanity. On the other hand, uh, this uh, molecular bondage and human re uh, re encoding a new mode of operation, and this leads to the question that how will define the humanity in the case of surveillance and uh, parties propaganda. Another example is Blade Runner movie of 1982, uh, which is uh, a, a central example of that. And if you talk about the central conflict in the Blade Runner, then it is about the making of replicants, uh, which is actually based, uh, made by the human body's different parts, and it is not a human. So they are replicants, but not humans. And similarly, they have emotions, feelings like a human. So that raises the question that how will define the humanity in that case? And it, uh, it blurs the lines between what is machine and what is human. And uh, this also uh, leads to the ethical question that should replicants have rights? Uh, is their lifespan uh, a form of a slavery? Like they had only seven to eight years of a lifespan and within that they will die. And now the basic central question in the movie is that they want to live more. And that is why they are protesting against their maker. So is there a question, ethical question raises that uh, should there is a space for a replicants in the society? So and another thing in the movie is that the black market of organs. So uh, the people in this uh, Blood Runner uh, society, they are doing the black marketing of human eyes human mind, human body, they are doing black market. Now, this also raises the question that how we will make uh, replicants and humans in future as well. Another uh, stark example is Action Machina movie. Uh, basically, this movie is uh, uh, centered upon the robot artificial intelligence uh, reflected in this uh, image named Eva. Uh, it is made by the Nathan. He's its creator. He's a very smart guy and he's preparing Eva as a part of his uh, research that should human have a consciousness. So he gave, uh, he gave the emotions, feelings, even sexuality to the Eva. So if the Eva comes uh, uh, in front of us as a human, then we are not able to uh, disparate that she is a girl or an artificial intelligence. So his basic project is that he wants to give the consciousness. Now this leads to the question 
that if it has a consciousness, then it has emotion. So how will we define the humanity is this with this? And there is a, a, a kind of an uh, research. So Nathan, basically creator of Eva, uh, called the uh, Caleb, another human being, and he uh, told him that you have to develop a relationship with the Eva. Uh, sorry, Eva. For I want to know how Eva works in that case. So he manipulated even Caleb for that. So and uh, the the thing is that Eva has an emotion. So she is developing relationship with Caleb and manipulating Caleb, and she uh, tried to betray him for going outside of his house so she is captured in his house but she goes away uh, putting caleb in the house uh, like uh, in jail and she went up so now this leads she has emotion she has she is the girl like a figure but she is going away without uh, thinking about the caleb who helps her to escape from that so now this really leads to the question that if we give the consciousness to the artificial intelligence, then how far it will be a dangerous to humans? Like they are not taking care of humans in that case. Uh, third, uh, very recent uh, film uh, based upon is The Creator, which is a sci-fi thriller. And it is a kind of a progressive movie uh, as compared to other uh, examples. So there is an AI created US uh, dissonance a nuclear bomb and it is be, uh, situated in 2015. So uh, there is a uh, lot of artificial intelligence named as a simulants and they are living with humans very uh, in a kind of a friendly atmosphere. And there are, uh, they are made a weapon uh, and that weapon destroyed the area where stimulants were receding. So be because they thought that there is a dangerous because of that. They are making uh, humans uh, life in, they put humans life in danger. In that case, uh, the Nirmata is the creator of these stimulants and Nirmata creates the weapon named uh, Alpha O. Uh, the, uh, the figure is reflected in the downstairs that a photo that in the alpha o which is a she robot and she named as alfie in the movie and she is made as a weapon weapon to destruct the weapon of the humans which is made for uh, destruct the uh, simulants so this now weaponization is a kind of a question that uh, if the alpha o the weapons the us fears is likely a bioengineered entity and uh, alpha, if we look at the, without uh, having the outlook of the uh, alpha O, like Alfie, if we look at directly to Alfie emotions, then it has similar emotions to human. Now that also leads to the question. Uh, the uh, film captures very well uh, coexistence of uh, simulants and humans. They are a part and parcel of their lives and they, they are living very happily with the simulants and even simulants are uh, protecting humans. Still, the organization authority is wants to wipe away the, all the uh, crowd of the simulants. So this ethical question of AI that uh, Alpha, Alpha has the emotional depth and it challenges the human that if uh, the protagonist of our uh, movie is too much connected with the Alpha now it uh, has the emotional depth and that leads to the question that if simulants have this much of emotions then how could we coexist together uh, the danger is bio warfare the film's central conflict originates from devastating nuclear detonation by an ai and the if the bioengineered weapons falls in a wrong hands then it couldn't be turned into disaster but if it falls in a right hand, then there is a coexistence of man and machine. So in conclusion, the bio, uh, bioengineering narratives or biopunk narratives uh, raises the question of complexity and ethical uh, implication of AI in human life. But the progressive side of it is it can create utopia for human by their coexistence, like AI and uh, humans uh, coexistence. And they can tackle the challenges. They can pushing the boundaries of medical and they work on that field. And they can connect the deeper emotions with human. They can create a community like artificial intelligence and human. And within near future, artificial intelligence is going to be a part of our life. 
as uh, robots and uh, which is shown in the movie like ex machina and uh, showing in this creator web series uh, movie so we have to accept the artificial intelligence in that case as a, a part of our life and we have a hope in our mind that we will coexist together as a community so uh, ai becomes a tool for good shaping a future where humanity and technology can thrive together uh, this is my references and thank you now if you have a, any question feel free to ask so Kathri, my question is for you that how do biopunk uh, narratives challenge the traditional notions of humanity and identity okay if we talk about humanity and identity, then uh, with the development of AI and with having AI consciousness, that leads to the question that uh, this consciousness has emotions, has a kind of feelings of humans. And this uh, traditional view of the AIs is like that they don't have emotion, they don't uh, work as a human, they don't coexist, they're just become a part of human as a machine so they can do the work of human but they don't have emotion now with the emergence of this artificial intelligence uh, there is a possibility of having the human emotions and if we're talking about particularly a biopunk genre then biopunk genre is raising awareness however it uh, showcases the destructive side so it uh, also create awareness among the humans that we have to always think about the what is the uh, darker side of the AI. We have to keep in mind and with that things we have to be progressive in the case of AI and all. So this biopunk in that way um, so challenges the traditional role. My question is, how does the emergence of biopunk reflect societal fears and concern about genetic uh, engineering and bio biotechnology and as seen through the lens of Orwell's newspaper in 1984? So, the basically biopunk genre developed in 1980. So, it is very recent in that case. Uh, we are looking at the 1984 and Newspeak as a part of Biopunk and it is a kind of one reading we are doing that. And if we look at about the societal fear that reflects in nowadays whatever the Biopunk narratives are coming, they are uh, focusing upon the social concern that uh, uh, there are in the movies also they are showing that there is a fear that like in Ex Machina, Eva However, after completing her uh, aim of uh, going out of the house, uh, she is not taking care of Caleb and she is leaving him uh, for uh, being dead. So now that raises the question and this also uh, show the uh, societal fear that uh, we have to be careful while making this uh, kind of an artificial intelligence and we have to think about ethical implication in that case and this concern and fears uh, will always be there uh, with that we have to look the progressive side of that and uh, so yes with these uh, biopunk narratives uh, this uh, the concerns and this the fears is uh, shown as a, a part of spreading awareness among the people Thank you. Hello, I am Darshan Vag 
and I am here with the presentation on waiting and absurdity, exploring the existential themes in waiting for Godot. This is my personal information. So, waiting for Godot is a masterful work of Samuel Bucket, who is an uh, Irish playwright, and uh, he won Nobel Prize. And waiting for Godot was first premiered in 1953, in which the main characters, two main characters, were Vladimir and Estragon aimlessly waiting for Bodo, a mysterious figure who never arrives. So the thoughts in uh, existential thoughts in the play. So the play is full of existential uh, uh, elements. The play explores the themes of uh, nothingness, despair, and struggle for existence. The two main characters, Vladimir and Estragon, are trapped in a cycle waiting for Bodo who never arrives. This symbolizes the absurdity of life that lacks the inheriting meaning. The play has characters like Kuzo and Lucky, a master and a slave, to highlight the contradiction of human existence. The character experiences uh, identity crisis and alienation. So time plays a vital role uh, in the play. It drags on uh, for the characters are waiting, but also signifies the importance of life. The characters engage in conver conversations to avoid loneliness and dread, but ultimately remains in isol remain isolated. The play is a meditation on human condition in seemingly meaningless world. The absurdity of existence. So, like Dante's neutral, Vladimir and Estragons are perpetually waiting without a goal, trapped in a meaningless cycle. The character grapples with the futility of their existence, questioning very meaning of life. The face, uh, faced with the absurdity of this uh, situation, Vladimir and Estragon even considered a suicide as, as a way out, but they do not get a rope to hang themselves. The very notion of suicide highlights the depth of uh, despair they experience in their absolute world. Finding meaning in the meaningless. So it is the key aspect of uh, existential uh, notions that we argue. Like they argue that uh, life is full of uh, meaninglessness, but we have to find meaning. Like they say the uh, process of womb to tomb, it is all uh, meaningless. Like in our any action of ours is meaningless, whether this is uh, whether it is presentation or uh, giving peer evolution or even getting a job. Everything is meaningless. Every action of ours is meaningless, but we have to find meaning in it. So, for further exploration, I will uh, try to get uh, notions from uh, the psychological essay from Camus, uh, Myth of Sisyphus. So, just like Sisyphus, forever condemned to push a boulder uphill represent an apparently pointless activity, but he finds meaning in it. Uh, similar to uh, the waiting for Godot, Vladimir and Estragon find meaning in their persistent waiting for Godot, Godot even, to, even though his arrival is uncertain. So it suggests that uh, having a goal, having a purpose, uh, provide meaning regardless of outcome. So importance of connection. This, so the connection uh, can be a huge help to take a leave from uh, this uh, critical notions. So uh, Latimer and Estragon's companionship provides comfort and support as they grapple with the meaningless of their existence together. Facing the absurdity of the world, their bond offers them a sense of solid, solidarity and sh shared experience. Despite their circumstances, they manage to find moments of joy and connection in each other's company. Their friendships uh, acts as a lifeline, helping them cope with their despair and alienation of their absurd world. Here comes now uh, Lucky's paradox. So Lucky, Lucky is a slave of Kuzo, and he only do things as Kuzo told him to do. He does not uh, uh, think further. So he does not uh, have this kind of uh, uh, existential crisis. So. The, his lack of free will might grant him a simpler, uh, simpler form of happiness, but it will eventually crush down his individuality. Uh, this situation mirrors some religious doctrines that emphasize complete surrender to a higher power, offering structure and purpose, but potentially sacrificing individuality. So finding hope, finding meaning in the face of nothingness. So despite the bleakness, the character holds on to a silver of hope that Godot will arrive. They uh, contemplate leaving, but uh, ultimately choose to stay, suggesting 
a desire for connection and meaning. So the play ends uh, with uh, Vladimir and Estragor continue continues to wait for Godot in uncertainty. So in conclusion, waiting for Godot lingers in the mind and it uh, does not provide any simple explanation, but it challenges us to confront this existential crisis. Waiting for Godot is a stark portrait of our existence, leaving us to ponder our place in a universe that may not care. For further reading, you can uh, visit these sources. Now, I would like to have your questions. Darshan, my question is for you. You are comparing lucky with religious surrender. How far is it justifiable to escape from taking responsibility for your own actions? Uh, according to me, it is not justifiable at all. But uh, people can have uh, other interpretations. But uh, for uh, my end, it is not justifi uh, justifiable. It would be better if uh, everyone would take accountability for their action it would be it would create a better world next please so my question is what parallels exist between lucky's paradoxical freedom and religious teaching uh, on surrounding to a higher power Uh, parallel could be uh, the thing that Lucky should. Lucky has brain. He is a human being. He has choice to be himself and not to uh, just rely on a something that uh, by just. By just rely on a uh, higher power is not a uh, solution. Everyone has, uh, Lucky has the ability to think, so he sh should uh, not be just a slave. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I am Bhumi Bagohil and today's topic for my presentation is Beyond Humanity, a comparative analysis of dehumanization in dystopian narratives. These are my academic information. So let us begin by understanding what is dystopia. Um, uh, Merriam Webster's uh, definition of dystopia says that dystopia is an imagined world or society in which people lead wretched, dehumanized and fearful lives. As you can see, the word dehumanized is present in the very definition of dystopia. So through this presentation, I will try to explore how important is dehumanization in dystopian literature and how it's portrayed by different creators. For my presentation, I have taken the example of 1984 by George Orwell, Brave New World by Old Dogs Huxley, Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Antwood, and Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. So now let us start by understanding dehumanization. Um, the definition of dehumanization is to deprive someone or something of human qualities, personality, or dignity. Now, Kelman says that dehumanization in dystopian literature showcases the loss of essential human qualities like identity and community. So through this, we will also see how far his um, definition is right. So let us begin with 1984. Uh, this is the basic information on the novel. Uh, it is set in the o in Oceania, which is a totalitarian state ruled by party and big brother. We see a totalitarian government and surveillance on everything and lack of privacy in this. The dehumanizing element um, in this novel, as I said, that there is no privacy. The big brother is always watching you. And uh, other than that, we have newspeak, which is a language manipulating tool. They use opposite words and uh, like they would say that... Uh, 
ministry of peace and ministry of peace is actually military so in this way there is language of manipulation there is thought police so people don't even have the privacy of their own thought there is surveillance on everything there is a hate week which uh, promotes this mob mentality mob mentality where citizens come together and hate on one person particular person and this leads to emotional manipulation as well so we see that propaganda and manipulation of history is a big part of the party in 1984 as the slogan of the party is who controls the past controls the future who controls the present controls the past and uh, another one is that for who, how could you establish even the most obvious fact when there exists no record outside your own memory so we see that party manipulates history and makes people forget what really happened and in this way uh, um, people are not sure what to think they don't know what to believe in and uh, in this way they are stealing the identity and very freedom to think of people there is also control over people's relations we see that they are not allowed to have uh, real connections with each other here also we see that identity and community are both threatened threatened mm, there is also physical and uh, psychological torture as we see that our protagonist vincent is taken to room 101 and uh, he is tortured until he is ready to accept the party's rule and uh, there is also physical degradation uh, we can see that uh, the rationing of food supplies the higher class people have better quality of things and lower class people are uh, they don't even have blade to shave so in this way we can see uh, now let us see dehumanization in brave new world uh, again this is some basic information about it it is a novel by aldox huxley and uh, it is set in a futuristic world state where society is engineered for stability and conformity a uh, brave new world uh, is quite kind of different from 1984 in one manner is that it is not ruled by fear the people there don't know that uh, the dehumanizing element that are prevalent in their society they are not aware of things that are going wrong and even if they are they would not want it to change now let us see why so one of the major thing is they have eradicated a uh, natural reproductive systems in their world there is artificial birthing process called decanting so children are genetically manufactured in labs and uh, through this they also uh, make, make sure that uh, people stay in their particular class system they never escape from it because uh, there is a, there is this category of people called as epsilon which are the lowest class of people so the children who are going to be epsilon stunted mentally their mental growth is stopped at certain point so not only will they never have the potential to succeed they wouldn't even have the ambition to it they only have intelligence enough to uh, create to live their life as the government decided so other than that we see future chemical workers when they are children they are given this uh, small amount of toxins so that their body becomes immune to it and uh, one very um, disturbing thing they do is mental conditioning so the children from lower class when they are children and they are br brought to a room and they are given books and toys and everything luxurious and as they are enjoying it as they are playing it uh, they, there is sound torture so loud sound is played and the floor starts the electrocution and th in this manner they are conditioned to never like these things so through genetical engineering and things like this they make sure that people never really escape their class system and the world goes on like the power wanted to there is another thing as i said that it is a brave new world is not uh, governed by fear but it is governed by manipulation of the pleasure principle so there is this soma drug it is said that uh, it 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 does not really hinder people's uh, thinking process but it makes them really calm so here uh, there is this uh, exploitation of human beings desire to be free from struggles and uh, there is also ban on books that evoke strong emotion uh, there is mention of shakespeare and tolstoy books that uh, nobody is allowed to read them because they would make people feel things and uh, so there is a the government really wants that people don't have strong emotion and uh, as i said that uh, because of artificial birthing process the parent children uh, relationship is also disturbed very much and uh, naturally there is natural living communities in uh, in the villages side just like in 1984 we have but here instead of hiding them people can go and have a vacation there 
and through that they see what ugly life is and in this manner they would feel grateful that they are here oppressed by the government but they don't even know this so in this manner dehumanization is portrayed there now let us look at handmaid's tale this is a novel by margaret atwood and uh, it is based on the republic of gilead it is basically united states but then it is attacked by sons of joseph too and uh, it is turned into a military society and uh, one of the biggest thing they do there is that women are made the lowest class citizens and they lose complete autonomy over themselves so women are uh, divided into classes that a few of them can be wives the commander's wives and uh, everybody has a particular uh, uniform they have to wear a particular set of rules they that they have to follow then so there are mostly uh, three kind of groups one is uh, commander's wives they wear blue clothes then we have handmaids who are made to wear this uniform uh, the red one and then we have uh, marthas as well who are like workers and cooks and servants and they are made to wear green and through this uh, basic human rights of uh, women are taken away they are not allowed to have money or property they are not allowed to read or write uh, not only that they are not allowed to talk to each other the handmaids especially are not allowed to talk to each other or have friendships or have any kind of community uh, the gilead rigorously suppresses two key feelings for the handmaids the desire to talk freely and openly and the hunger to commit the act of touch so as in many other examples the human relation and the community is uh, very much restricted here here as well we can see the constant surveillance by the chiefs called eyes so eyes are always on the people and one wrong move and they will be taken away uh, another thing is that their original names of handmaids are taken away from them so they use possessive labels like of plus the commander's name the commander which they belong to so here we see the objectification of women like that the narrator of uh, this novel is called of fred of fred because she belongs to the commander fred and the handmaids are reduced solely for their reproductive capacity they are seen as this uh, walking wombs and nothing else now let us look at dehumanization in never let me go Uh, this is a novel by Kazuo Ishiguro, and uh, it is set in uh, England in twentieth to early twenty first century. And uh, here also, we see the narrator. Our narrator is Kate Kathy, and she is a human clone. So here, people are uh, they are clones are made from somebody, some higher class people, and uh, the entire purpose of a clone's life is to give their valuable organs to that person until they die. So here we see that their lives are predetermined, and their sole purpose is of becoming organ donors. And uh, the word death or dying is not used as well. They use the word complete as if it was a mission, and that was their entire purpose. So when Kathy is studying in Helsham School, which is the school for the clones, uh, there is a Miss Lucy, and she says that none of you will go to America, none of you will be film stars, and none of you will be working in supermarkets, as I heard some of you planning the other day. Your lives are set out for you. You will become adults. Then, before you are old, before you are even middle aged, you will start to donate your vital organs. That's what each of you was created to do. So here we also see that the identity of the person is completely destroyed. They are not allowed to do anything else other than being donator, donate donors of uh, organs. And uh, another thing we see is that the clones are very passive and uncomplaining about this treatment. Even the Kathy our narrator is having an empty narration. You don't see an overwhelming amount of sadness in her narration or anything. So this sh shows that. There is also suppression of emotion done here, and their identities are replaced by codes and numbers, and they are treated like animals bred for productive purposes only. Their entire purpose, as I said, that is to give organs, and they are not allowed to have any sort of future. Uh, so now let us see some similarities and differences between them. Uh, some of the major similarities are loss of autonomy. People don't have control over their own body, their own mind, and cannot think for themselves. There is also suppression of emotion. They cannot describe it and uh, what they are feeling, or they are sometimes not allowed to. So in 1984, we see that uh, people are always monitoring the face. So even if you have a strong emotion and it shows on your face, then it is called a thought crime. Uh, in uh, Handmaid's Tale as well, this is seen that uh, they are not allowed 
to talk, they're not allowed to express any sort of emotion. And objectification of people is also seen in all this, that they are treated as mere objects, and maids are treated as wounds, and clones are only clones are only uh, useful for organ donations. So, but there are a few differences in this. So, 1984 is uh, very much based on psychological manipulation. The dehumanization is done through that. And uh, people are from the very beginning told what to think, what not to think. The history is, as I said, that uh, erased, changed sometimes. The truth is manipulated. So, through psychological manipulation, dehumanization is seen in 1984. In Brave New World, we see genetic engineering and uh, how people cannot even think anything different. They cannot escape even if they want to. And uh, in Handmaid's Tale, we see strict gender roles and uh, how women are oppressed and dehumanized. In Never Let Me Go, we see subtle exploitation because the clones are, the emotion of the clones is suppressed so much that they don't, they don't have this desire to rebel. So in this manner, uh, dehumanization is treated by uh, different authors. We see that dehumanization becomes a powerful lens through which authors explore consequences of oppressive regime, societal control, and the erosion of individual freedom. It also serves as a cautionary tale for the readers about danger of unchecked power. It portrays the potential for human right abuse and promotes critical thinking and inspires a social change in their readers. So these are my references. And now for your questions. So, Bhumi, my question is, do the ending of this novel offer hope into the potential for resistance and resilience in the face of dehumanization? Uh, actually, no. None of these uh, novels offer this over overwhelming feeling of hope. 1984 ends with uh, Vincent uh, changing his own uh, ideas about the party and whatever streak of rebellion he had was uh, uh, taken out of him, I would say, through psychological torture. In the brave new world, the people are not aware of this dehumanization. And even if they are, they would not want to escape because the pleasure principle is, uh, as I said, exploited. So they wouldn't even want to change. In Handmaid's Tale, in the ending, we see that uh, because of uh, some crime, the Offred character is uh, taken by the authorities. And she's unsure that what will happen to her. So it also has a bleak ending. And in Never Let Me Go, we see that Kathy, who lives with two of her best friends, Tommy and Ruth, both of them have completed their mission, I would say. And Kathy is waiting for her last organ donation. So she is also going to die. So all of the endings are very bleak and you don't see much hope in it. Gumi, my question is for you. Do you believe that today's society is turning into dystopian society with dictators, consumerism and control of media and distorting the constitution? Um, I think it depends on personal perspective. And uh, yes, many elements of these dystopian narratives can be seen in our um, real life contemporary times as well. So if we see 1984, as you said, that there is manipulation of uh, news and uh, manipulation of truth. So we see that in many governments of the uh, entire world right now. Uh, in <laughs> uh, one element from Brave New World that we see is uh, the manipulation of pleasure principle, as I said. So we have that in our time as well through social media and easy accessibility to pleasure. Whenever we want to be distracted, it is right there in our hands. So people are not uh, promoting critical thinking and instead they are saying that, you know, enjoy your life. And uh, in Handmaid's Tale, this loss of autonomy of women. So there are many debates going around the world about the abortion rights. And uh, should women be in charge of their own bodies? So I think, uh, yes, there are some qualities, but uh, there is also hope, I would say, because there are readers and there are such writers. And uh, maybe they would be successful in um, enlightening the other citizens. Um, so that was my presentation. Thank you so much.
Hello everyone, very good, good afternoon to everyone. Today I am here with the presentation on narrative techniques in 1984 by George Orwell. So 1984, as we all know, a masterpiece novel by George Orwell. It originally published in 1949 and it is a dystopian novel. Let's see the narrative techniques in the novel. There are two narrative perspectives in the novel by George Orwell. First one is third person limited and second one is first person. George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984 masterfully employs a third person limited, limited narrative perspective allowing readers to experience the story through the eyes of the protagonist Winston, Winston Smith. Select, selectively reveals Winston's thought and emotions. And this perspective heightens the sense of isolation and paranoia uh, that uh, pervades the oppressive world of Oceania. Orwell also in, in, incorporates the first, first person elements such as uh, ex, excerpts from Winston's personal diary, which provides more intimate and subjective glimpses into the character inner turmoil and resistance against the total, totalitarian regime. So let's see the significance of the omniscient narrator. The omniscient narrator in 1984 grants the reader unparalleled insight into the thoughts and motivation of the character. This narrative perspective allows Orwell to fully immerse the audience in the dystopian world um, providing a deeper understanding of the character in a turmoil and the oppressive nature of the totalitarian region. Uh, George Orwell also used the stream of consciousness in the novel's narrative technique. Uh, stream of consciousness in, in uh, simple words, it, it is a narrative style which can, which try to uh, represent uh, character's thought of process in a realistic way. So Orwell masterfully employs stream of consciousness to immerse the reader in the troubled psyche of the protagonist Winston Smith. Through this technique, we gain intimate access to Winston's internal thought process, fear and fleeting impression, heightening the emotional impact of the narrative. Uh, some symbolism and its narrative function, which uh, uh, George Orwell tries to convey with uh, the novel. The first is time. The, uh, the relentless ticking of clock symbolizes the oppression of the totalitarian region and the protagonist struggle against the inexorable passage of time. Second one is surveillance. Uh, by the surveillance, the ubiquitous Big Brother poster and telescreen represent the omnipresent uh, surveillance and control exerted by the party controlling to the novel, novel's dystopian atmosphere. Third one is language. The corruption of language through newspeak symbolizes the party's attempt to control and limit, uh, limit thought, highlighting the power of language and shaping, in, uh, and, shaping and con uh, constraining human experiences. Dystopian world. So in the uh, Bull novel, uh, George Orwell uh, described the dystopian world uh, with uh, very descriptive, descriptive details. In 1984, Orwell uh, meticulously crafts the dystopian world of Oceania through vivid descriptive details from the omnipresent surveillance cameras and slogans of the party to the crumbling urban landscape and oppressive architecture, every element paints. Uh, a chilling picture of total, uh, totalitarian control. Sensory details like the acrid smell of cheap cheap in the, the drape grayness of the city and the mechanical wiring of telescreening immerse the reader in the bleak and dehumanizing environment. These richly described elements serve to emphasize the uh, suffocating nature of uh, life under Big Brother's watchful eyes. By three types of irony, uh, George Orwell impact the narrative structure. Um, first is dram dramatic irony. Orwell employs dramatic irony where the readers know more than the characters. This 
high turns the tension and sense of foreboding as we witness Win uh, Winston's doom at attempts to rebel. Second one is verbal irony. The party slogan like war is peace and freedom is slavery are examples of verbal irony highlight, highlighting the dystopian regions, uh, Orwellian dystopian language and meaning. Situation irony. The irony twist that Winston's a uh, thought criminal is forced to work at the Ministry of Truth underscores the dystopian world per, uh, perversion of truth and morality. There are three foreshadowing, uh, foreshadowing and its role in the plot. First one is subtle hints. Second one is building attention. And third one is increase the suspense. Characterization through dialogue and actions. The first dialogue reveals character. Orwell masterfully use, uh, uses the character's dialogue to expose their personalities, beliefs, and motivations. Each character's unique speech, pattern, and word choices provided insight into their inner thoughts and feelings. The second one is action speak louder. The character's phys physical actions and behavior also plays a crucial, crucial role in their characterization. Orwell de depicts uh, how they move, react, and make decisions, allowing the readers to draw con conclusions about their um, temp temperaments uh, and values. Contrasting personalities, the dialogue and actions of characters like Winston and Julia or O'Brien and Parsons create a stark contrast that highlights their highlights their different differing perspective and motivations within within the obsessive world of 1984. Last one is emotional depth. Through the character's world and deeds, Orwell conveys, conveys their emotional complexities from Winston's internal struggle to Julia's passionate uh, defense. Uh, this, depth, this depth of characterization draws the reader into the narrative and its theme. So in the in the conclusion, let's see Orwell Orwell's mastery of narrative techniques. The uh, first part is per, perspective shift. Orwell skillfully transitions between third person limited and first person perspective, providing the reader with intimate insight into the protagonist uh, thought thoughts and experience. The second one is uh, immersive description. Um, by the vivid sensory rich description, George Orwell. And the dystopian world of 1984 immersed the readers, making the setting of crucial narrative elements. And the last one is symbolic significance. Orwell's tragic use of symbolism, such as the ever present, present telescreen, underscores the novel's theme of oppression and the laws of individuality. Here are some of my references. If you have any questions. So Akshay, my question is, how does Orwell use the concept of news, uh, news peak and appendix to enhance the storytelling and the world building in 1984? Um, by the novel, uh, Orwell uses news peak uh, to show how language uh, can be manipulated and control the people and also reflect the party's power and with the appendix, it uh, adds depth into it and shows the newspeak's uh, impact on uh, current society. And it also uh, helps to uh, engaging our uh, understanding on dystopian world. Um. Akshay, my question is, how does the structure of 1984 contribute to the novel's themes of surveillance, control, and rebellion? The structure which is used by uh, George Orwell is very complex. Uh, the structure of 1984 is uh, mirror to the society it's port portrayed. And by the constant surveillance uh, on the character, it mirrors to the theme of control and by the rebellion cycling nature 
uh, it provides the uh, plot's uh, repetitive uh, cycling details and by the structure uh, we by the structure uh, George Orwell enhancing our understanding uh, to the themes of surveillance, control and the struggle of freedom. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I am Agar Chawda and today I will make a presentation on uh, exploring the floating world, understanding Edo period Japan. So these are the points to ponder. These, these points we will cover in the presentation. Uh, start, starting with the Ukiyo-e. Ukiyo is an artistic genre which was flourished in the 17th century Edo period Japan and which, uh, which is in which uh, the uh, artist uh, artists were made prints and uh, prints and paintings on the uh, uh, different uh, aspects of the uh, life everyday life and also they have portrayed the blazer district such as court courtesans and kabu characters of the edo period ukiyo is generally translated into english as the pictures of the floating world and uh, the urban middle class which was flourished in the 17th century japan which was which which, uh, which were the merchant class people were known as the choning and they were the uh, person of the town and were and they were the primary patrons of the ukiyo-e woodblock prints. The term ukiyo-e we can further divide it into the uh, uh, three parts. Uh, the first one is the uki, uh, which can uh, can be uh, translated into the floating. Uh, then comes yo, which can be translated into world, and e can be seen as a picture, painting, or print. So the ukiyo-e means the floating world of the. Uh, uh, pictures of the floating world. However, there is uh, another connotation of the ukiyo-e as well. Long before the Edo period, there was here uh, there, uh, there, it is a Buddhist connotation, and it was uh, in, it was during the ninth uh, ninth century Heian period. They used to dis, uh, they used this term to describe the ephemeral uh, uh, ephemeral uh, beauty and the melancholy of the life. Uh, this uh, particular term is used as a so, to connote the sorrowful world. And uh, they were used. Uh, they used this world uh, towards the transient of the everyday life and the inevitable loss of the beauty. But by the Edo period in the 17th century, the new merchant class people who has uh, who has new wealth, they used this term. They used this term to uh, uh, celebrate the everyday life and the joys of everyday life. So, uh, Utagawa Hiroshige and Katsuchika Hokusai were the last two great masters of the lands, uh, landscape. Uh, ukiyo-e tradition. Uh, these are uh, these are the paintings of the landscape ukiyo-e, and these paintings are taken from the relevant uh, articles. And our here our major con major major concern is that uh, how these floating worlds affected the uh, social cultural uh, social cultural development in the Edo period of Japan, and does the ukiyo-e still resonates in our culture today uh, in uh, Japanese culture or contemporary time? So, uh, what are the origins of and what are the reasons of the floating worlds to emerge? So first of all, uh, in the Tokugawa uh, in, the, uh, in the 17th century, uh, it is the Tokugawa dynasty's uh, Tokugawa dynasty's rule, and Tokugawa has established uh, comparative peace and social content uh, in the Edo Japan, and this extended peace uh, led towards the uh, led towards the prosperity and the peace of the uh, peace in the Edo period, and this resulted into the vibrant uh, uh, vibrant. Urbanization and people were uh, people were centralized in the Edo period Japan, and uh, in this way, the, the new culture or uh, new culture was born in the form of uh, pleasure pleasure districts and uh, cap, uh, pleasure capitals as well. And this extended period of peace uh, with, uh, with warfare, samurai class was born. Uh, samurai class was born, and the merchant class people have uh, indulged themselves. In uh, indulge themselves in the pleasure districts and all the things. And key elements of the floating world 
what are the key, key uh, one of the key element is the, uh, pleasure district uh, which is also known as the flower capital and all the things were the key elements and there were also Gisha, uh, Gisha and the Kabuki actors were there. Gishas are uh, professional performer, uh, performers in the traditional singing and dancing into the Japan. Uh, unlike uh, other prostitutes, Gisha were not physically uh, physically available to the, their customer. Uh, rather, they uh, in, uh, rather they engage their customer into the intellectual uh, conversation. They flirt with them. They pour tea to them. Uh, so this th the thing that they are not physically available to their customer that makes them uh, more uh, popular at that time. And there was also the emergence of the Kabuki actors and Kabuki theater as well uh, within the confinement of the uh, Yukaku. Yukaku is a uh, red light, uh, Yukaku is a Japanese word which stands for the red light district. So this is the picture, Isha preparing for an entertainment uh, which is attributed to the Chobunsai Ishi. And uh, this is the Kabuki theater uh, pictured by the Utagawa Toyokun. Okay, so Yoshiwara district. Yoshiwara district uh, is one of the infamous uh, red light district during the Edo period of Japan, alongside with the Kyoto, uh, Kyoto and uh, and uh, and third one, uh, the social regulation. Tokugawa shogun created specific areas for pleasure related activities. This uh, this Yoshiwara district was a licensed red light district. Uh, uh, the Tokugawa Ieyasu himself given license to this district, and uh, this is kind of a city within the city. Uh, uh, we can make a parallel between the uh, modern modern day uh, club clubhouses and uh, uh, as well because in in that Yoshiwara was a cluster of show there is everything that is available for the pleasure of the merchant class people like uh, we have uh, uh, we are into the uh, one of the game zone or uh, that that kind of thing and Yoshiwara was approximately a uh, house for the countless uh, uh, sex workers and they there is also hierarchy in that as well from Eli Tayu to the Oiran and the lower class sex, sex workers are also there uh, the life in uh, life within the Yoshiwara is not so much uh, uh, easy easy for the all the sex workers because uh, they were uh, they were there from the seven uh, from very early ages and they have to suffer more in uh, suffer in the brothels as well so ukiyo artists and ukiyo artists have drawn these uh, pictures of these prostitutes and they also in in a way some of bias in drawing the pictures as well they do not choose the lower class uh, lower uh, lower class prostitute rather they go for the uh, higher oiran or the elite to draw their uh, to draw their paintings in the their wood, wood blocks and the, uh, after surviving a catastrophic fire in 1657 yoshiwara was relocated in the, its present day location in asakusa it was uh, suffered a great fire as well and it is only after the uh, anti-prostitution act of 1958 that this prostitution have banned in the japan and it is uh, illegal it is become illegal so this is the theme in the yoshiwara by hishikawa monoro you can see the uh, uh, background of the yoshiwara in this picture so uh, does this uh, yoshiwara remain still uh, so the answer is no this, uh, these are the pictures, some remnants of the Yoshiwara in the current day Tokyo, and it is uh, just another, uh, just uh, just another place of the Tokyo city, which is teeming with the people. There is uh, some remnants of they have uh, taken care of because of their tradition. So uh, yes, does uh, yes, uh, Yoshiwara still resonates in the popular culture, uh, and uh, pleasure districts have countless uh, countless time influenced the Japanese uh, Japanese films, movies and web series and uh, anyway which is fall into the pop popular culture so the unfathomable destruction of the yoshiwara lent itself greatly to the world of demon slayer the mangaka koyoharu gotoge is uh, is is the maker of the demon slayer and this show particularly shows the flashiness of the yoshiwara an area with a teeming life and pleasure the, though this show does not offer the full glance of the pleasure district but this uh, this uh, this show does offer some kind of uh, Key aspects of the pleasure districts in the in in, in it. Uh, then we have one character Daki who is uh, Oiran in the uh, in the series, uh, and we can see she is going. Uh, she is offering herself to the customer, and she is going house to house. So these are the uh, some of the pictures from the uh, anime that uh, you can clearly see the uh, flashiness of the Yoshiwara in that. So.
there is interesting parallel between the uh, current Instagram and Ukiyo-e. That uh, Instagram, uh, it current time uh, in every everyone's mobile phone, there is a uh, we have Instagram and we constantly sc uh, scrolling reels. And it is in a way uh, Instagram is uh, considered as a uh, popular culture, and everyone used Instagram. It is fallen. It is a mass. Uh, um, it is one of the mass media. Like uh, at that time, Edo, uh, uh, at Ukiyo -e were the Ukiyo -e, uh, was the uh, popular at that time. Like Instagram in this in this world. Uh, influence and legacy of the Ukiyo-e. Isolation of Japan in Edo period created the perfect circumstances to grow Japanese art without any foreign elements in it. Uh, uh, Japan during the Tokugawa dynasty was not connected with the outer world. It is, uh, and that is the reason why uh, this uh, tradition of the Japan was uh, flourished in that time. So after the commodore Matthew Perry of United United States uh, forced in, in his way to the Japan and Japanese uh, tradition. Uh, and art, uh, Japanese tradition and artistic value have influenced the entire globe. And one parallel we can make between the sim similar theme is Japanese artists and uh, impressionist, uh, French impressionists. Uh, French artists like Vincent van Gogh, Edward, uh, Edward Manet, Camille Pissarro, and uh, Edgar Degas were the influenced by the Japanese art. So uh, van Gogh himself coined the term Japanese Japanism which stands for the Japanese in Japanese traditional influence on the Western side. And you can see the picture of a uh, picture by Edward Mano, a corner of a cafe in concert. In this picture, there is a uh, this, uh, man, uh, blend of Japanese arts and Western art. And this is also Vincent Van Gogh is uh, influenced by the uh, Utagawa Hiroshige's painting. Uh, this is all uh, all the paintings self portrait with the band banked, uh, bandaged ear by Vincent and combing the hair by Edgar Degas. So ukiyo -e in modern times. So uh, yes, ukiyo -e still remains in the modern times. There is uh, one institute, Adachi Institute, which is located in the Tokyo Tokyo district, uh, which which is engaged in the re reproduction of the ukiyo -e, uh, uh, and the reproduction of the masters of the ukiyo. -e like a uh, hoku size work they have rep reproduced and all the things and there is also one masters one master of the ukiyo-e still uh, in the uh, institute which is uh, who is Ni ninomi morishika here is the uh, uh, painting and this is the 2013 multicolor wood woodcut print uh, created by the design by the artist hiramatsu reiji so in conclusion we can say that uh, the concept of hedonistic uh, floating world allowed for the development of the distinct culture and broad artistic production in the Edo period, especially in the Ukiyo-e journal. And, the, uh, and these pleasure quarters developed their own intrinsic culture surrounding the Godson, fashion, entertainment and hedonism. And uh, we, uh, we have seen that art is the mirror of society. So all the ukiyo -e artists have uh, depicted this uh, uh, hedonism in their paintings. So these are the references. Thank you. Now you can ask me questions. So, Akash, my question is Are there any elements of Ukiyo prevalent in contemporary art or literature, and where can we explore more about them? So, there is, uh, in uh, I've searched that there is no. Uh, contemporary influence in India, but uh, in outer side in, Jap in Japan itself, uh, it is reproduced uh, time and again with the uh, new themes and Western elements. They they do not constrain the ukiyo-e within the Japanese art form. They have let them influenced by the other art forms as well. And we have seen the combined mixture of the Jap uh, combined influence of uh, of the painting between ukiyo-e and all other influence. Akash, my question is, how did the hierarchical structure within Yoshiwara, such as a distinction between Orient and other sex workers, influence social dynamics and power relations within the pleasure district during that period? So the pleasure district itself, uh, uh, itself has a hierarchy of things, but uh, in the pleasure district, all the people, like samurai and the lower class people, they do not, uh, they treated equally. 
they treat it uh, equally on the basis of the how much money they possess. And uh, if we talk about the Oiran and the other sex workers, uh, it is said that uh, there are thousands of prostitute. Uh, there are thousands of prostitute working in the uh, such a, such kind of pleasure district, and there are only six six Oiran uh, among them. So it is a uh, uh, very uh, uh, other. Uh, it is suffering feeling for other people, and only Oiran and uh, uh, Oiran and Tayu only uh, have the uh, some of the advantages to live. So yes, there is the power relation within the pleasure district. Okay, thank you. So, uh, still some of you are taking longer time. I right? see that you are present within the stipulated time that you are given. Seven to eight minutes uh, is the time that uh, they allow you to speak for. Okay, so a very quick review of the So when you compare the thing, how did you try to think to the it is very important to see how well you have understood the basic concept. So if uh, you don't compare uh, speak only straightforward, then we don't get exactly the idea. The concept clarity might be wrong or not. So, comparison helps when with that film or any other art or other thing, if you present, then uh, is there any gap in proper understanding or articulating the understanding uh, or not? So, that was the view of the presentation slide. Uh, Here, uh, I'm talking about the museum uh, and this connecting the marketing from unreliable in that. In Harbin, he is also different. Our banks are compared uh, to see the existential banks at that time. In Biopunk, Thatri's presentation. So, what uh, is the problem? Yeah, for example, in Russian and in this. Now, unreliable narrator is uh, not only first person narrator. Now, if you make it a third person, that doesn't mean that. That is the difference between the Russian and uh, this. So, uh, when a person is telling, he is genuinely telling the story, he is not uh, telling a lie as such. He wants that event to be recorded in that person. But something happens in such a manner that he is not able to So that is guilt. He has to face uh, something that he don't want to face. That is not exactly the case with the pressure on uh, narrative that doesn't happen. He is unreliable narrative, but he is deliberately doing that to hide a crime. Uh, that is how he is also successfully able to do that. So there is no as such a guilt, but there is a victory at the end. Victory of doing something wrong. Uh, to be honest, there is not that victory, there is a defeat, which gives a very interesting lesson you know, that you may escape uh, uh, something for a while, and then your guilt, your memory will keep on torturing and governing you. In case of the film, even the audience are dead. So that it doesn't transfer that guilt in consciousness, or rather, it memorizes something that is done in a wrong manner. It has to memorize that. So that is Different than that, but first person narrator, which makes a very important point. Entire narrative is controlled by this person. That is the third person narrator. Uh, things are not like that. In case of uh, this characters uh, of Nawai or Jai Deeru, they also uh, try to glamorize. If you just think of uh, the idea that there are times, then you can classify so many times, but you can't extend that to the realm of existential games. Which is suffered by nothing greatest record. You can't agree to that point. Because even in all those cases, also there is uh, uh, there is fun around uh, the existence or whatever they are, whoever they are, they are happy. Uh, and people would love to be like that. Uh, nobody would love to be like uh, the and nothing 
if people imagine that my whole day will be like this, then people uh, are much more difficult. So uh, that way, to uh, some extent, uh, they are uh, a type of trends that is in a, uh, uh, this trends do not uh, speak about existentialism uh, 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 as such uh, in those narrative models. In case of biology, uh, also. So, Dathri uh, was trying to connect uh, to speak with uh, uh, this uh, uh, idea. Now, that is the problem in that. To speak uh, is at the level of language, which is at the level of mind. Language is at the level of the mind. Psychological thing that has controlled the human. Whereas, biopolitics is with body. It tries to control the body. So, that is that mind body, huge difference in that. So, in uh, you speak, there is no attempt to control the world. Only the mind uh, is to be controlled. You are free to do whatever you do with your world. But mind, you don't have to think in a particular way. You have to think in the way we want you to think. You will erase some language, you will change the meaning so that in a particular manner only the people's mind are controlled. Biopunk tries to speak about controlling the body uh, by DNA manipulation, which is not a manipulation of language. It is more of a manipulation of DNA. So something here, if you want to think, then you can be thinking of a other thing, which can be psycho. This is the one to John Burke, popular literature of John Burke, which was beginning with cyberpunk. Earlier then, John Burke within cyberpunk comes the biopunk also. So many times biopunk comes from the cyberpunk. But within that, there is a manipulation of DNA. And then uh, something is being attempted to control the human body uh, and behavior. Then uh, that becomes very important. Blade Runner, uh, which was discussed, is considered as a classic example. In the 1980s, it was made. It was made by Trump uh, in 1980. And uh, they are manipulating humans. Uh, they are, uh, this uh, plastic humans are there, AI controlled, just like you. So there is no difference in that, but they are uh, robotic identities. Uh, and, uh, in that when the problem is when they realize that one of those uh, uh, robots might have given birth to a child. Now that is a huge problem. That is what you are controlled through DNA and other things. How can that go? If uh, somebody can give a birth, then it means that the child is not a human. So your DNA manipulation is done so that you can control and then you can tell people that you have to do this so that if they go and do them without having been because they, they will not restore those errors. Uh, it is memory that is and so they will never think that they are doing wrong. So people will command and say they go and kill those people, they are doing wrong things. So these people will go and kill them. They will think that they are doing the right job because these are wrong people and you have to kill them. So uh, that, that way, uh, DNA manipulation uh, happens uh, in the uh, in different discourses. So that, that difference uh, uh, also we need to think care of. Uh, this uh, there was a point of coexistence of human and this uh, new being that is the problem. Now that is what the people are uh, uh, thinking and they are having images of indigenous. Uh, that way you work there. If we start with the dead orders of what happens, uh, we are talking with that machines of generating humans, DNA manipulated humans, or AI populated humans, will be more powerful than us. They will get the work will be more effective with this human. And so, uh, someday, like uh, human companies to be in conflict with people. So, if you will come in conflict with these beings, new beings, then they will be over very easy. And then uh, they will remove us from the earth. And they will have to take control of the earth also. So we will be homeless. The humans will be uh, homeless. In that line, one can make a narrative. That we see the sun, we believe together. But as it happens in human history, that with uh, whatever justice of peace that we give to people, people are going to fight on different concerns. So there is a fight there. Uh, and then now uh, uh, it is a uh, bio war uh, with all these uh, cycles and uh, uh, so difficult for the humans to eat them and uh, the earth is gone. Now they occupy the entire earth. 
So let us uh, that one click the how VMA and other things can operate for each other. So also, uh, you give example of music you have to see again uh, uh, that how exactly uh, uh, all is trying to uh, see about uh, music that we don't see and as such agree uh, around us uh, that how people are changing the language uh, dynamics. Uh, recently we got a new word uh, in our discourse. Uh, uh, which was uh, this conflict of uh, Rajput and uh, that is going on. So that was the word uh, Pajput. Uh, our prince of Aurangar, <laughs> they gave this word in one of the days. So that was a new word coming up. <laughs> now that is uh, uh, where uh, uh, something is happening. But that way, we don't see as yes, whatever language is there that is very overtly, openly being utilized uh, into the larger narrative. Uh, rather than you will be trying to change and they want to remove all the words uh, which can possibly speak anything of this party or take the way of looking at the, the world. So the words should be dedicated uh, all together. So that is not in the mind. So mind never visualizes the world in a similar manner. Even if they visualize, they don't have a language to speak. That there should be a language to speak to articulate oneself. So, they are removing uh, that in a new state. Kusum and Kavita presented quite well. Kavita also. Uh, there was a second question was asked about social media and art. Uh, so here, uh, uh, how you see art? Art you to see as an expression of some ideas. Art is seen as an, uh, not as an art in totality, but what is art? In every art, novel, painting, other thing is nothing but an expression of an idea. That is, and social media posts are also expression of an idea. They are also expression of an idea. They come in a uh, not in an artistic manner, but they come in a well communicative language and people articulate themselves there. So at that level we are equal. At that level. So art has uh, the mode of expression then it can be seen in that manner. The person presented on absurdity. Uh, you cited from John Paper, I was uh, citing that one well, of uh, it was uh, John Paper, uh, instead of quality research paper. Uh, because in absurdity, you will want to find very good quality research paper from the school. Then there is no need to uh, type John papers uh, written by students for their undergrad or postgraduate uh, things. To me, it uh, also presented well with uh, examples of other texts, uh, dystopian texts. Akshay okay, also presented the history of uh, uh, this. Uh, so, in that also, you have to use this means. So like yesterday, I was telling you, so influential person has told about the history of UAE, how it began, and if somebody is telling that how in our times now, who says that, which article you read, that gets me, that you are incorporating those things in power. Because this is uh, coming from a country that uh, it is remote to us. So it is not our first state experience, whatever statement we make, we make from reading something. So those names, those people should be referred to mention and with that you have to uh, say that, those things there. You have put in the, uh, in the parenthesis on the side, but when you articulate what you speak, try to uh, bring that out. Okay, we end our session here. Best wishes for tomorrow's business. Tomorrow we don't, the day after tomorrow. Uh, we have the next presenters.